What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the stream. The streaming. We're streaming tonight. We're live. And I have with me my special guest, Twisted Chris, more twisted than ever, upside down, inside out. What's up, Chris? How are you doing? Pretty good. You have like the shortest intro out of any channel. <laughs> Hey, nobody wants to sit there and wait on that crap, you know, besides we already made our audience wait, uh, what, nine minutes? Well, yeah, that's true. Forgot we were going on tonight. <laughs> yeah, we start talking and just we're like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, I can see that we have uh, Joel, Retro Lizards, Custom Arcade, and Messiah 1S Gaming in here. What's up, guys? I don't know who else is here because I don't see a, a chat count or any other chats in the chat, but... Hey, hi, if you're here, if you're lurking, welcome. Um, it's going to be a chill night. We're going to be just talking about retro gaming in general and probably just converse about random randomness, you know, like real real time uh, conversation type stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, Chris, uh, we talked, we were talking a little bit, but, you know, you said you've been busy and stuff. What have you been doing with the uh, game room area? Um, well... Game room area, I've just been, you know, rearranging stuff. You know, I got the PS3 kiosk or whatever and trying to make room for stuff. I've been, like, selling some stuff and buying other stuff. Oh, it's a bad habit. But most of my time, though, I've been repainting the inside of the house. Some of the rooms I was putting, like, crown molding up. Oh, Nice. I want and then to do working that. in the backyard, and oh yeah, it's, God, it's a pain in the ass. And then I built a, a cedar uh, fence uh, in front of my breezeway or whatever, because my daughter has a dog, and she just wants to open the the back door and let him go outside, you know, instead of putting on a leash. So now he can just run around and not get loose. Yeah, like a dog, like a dog should. Yeah, and then the last couple of days been cleaning the garage because got another vehicle coming and. Yeah, I've just been busy. So Busy, busy, but yeah, me too. Me too. And it's it's good weather too, so it kind of gives you lots of energy and you're ready to get going, you know? Man, it's been, so. been kind of like doom and gloom out here. Lots of rain, which is not bad, um, but it's just, it's been raining a lot. Today, I think it's going to be the last day for at least a week. Um, but I would say out here, it'll probably start getting really hot. Uh, where are we? April, May it'll start getting like into the hundreds. It's just like it flips a switch every time. Now, what state are you in again? Cali. Yeah. Oh, Cali. Okay. I'm in Southern Cali. So it gets, it gets hot down here in the summertime. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But it's not, it's not there yet. Um, and I like, I like the cooler weather because I can actually do things, you know, um, like where it's under 90 Cause it's like once you get into 90 in the dry heat, it's just like you know, I mean, you know what hot weather is like, it's brutal to work, yeah. In, so, our heat is wet, yeah. You here. it's humid where you are, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think last year it got up to one, I think a few days it got up to like 112. I think, god, it was hot, but we had like I want to say we had maybe a little over two months straight ass 100 degree weather with no rain and then in october we had like a flash flood from hill so i mean texas is just it's just a bipolar state a bipolar state yeah yeah but it's nice right now so we're hoping you know let's get a couple more months in before it gets retarded hot and then you don't want to do nothing yeah so. yeah just laying out there with like a, a beer can and your shirt off and yeah you ain't kidding you might die yeah it's rough um okay so you're you got a ps3 kiosk mm -hmm. and um i feel like i watched some of that video i i watched your marvel versus capcom 2 did you do the ps3 kiosk yet um repeat that again did you do? Did you make a video for the PS3 kiosk? Because I watched your Marvel yes. versus Capcom two video. Okay, so I think I watched some of the um, PS3 kiosk video, but I didn't get to finish it. 
Um, okay. How much did you get that for, if you don't mind me asking? Um, like, or let's put it this at, way: What's a normal price on those in in good those, condition? The the PlayStation Three one probably between twelve to fourteen hundred. Um, <clears throat> I actually did a trade for it from oh, one of my okay, banners okay. that yeah, yeah. hung up. That's in the right. Game room. You, I think you told me that. Yeah, I bought the banner for two hundred dollars a couple of years ago. Now. It's it was worth a lot more than that, but I didn't really care about that. I wanted the kiosk, so it was a it was a fair trade. So it's a good price. Yeah. Now I had a PlayStation Four kiosk before. It was the countertop one, and then uh, I didn't like it because it was a countertop. If it was the standing one, I'd probably still own it. But countertop, you know, you put it on a table or whatever. It's just but the PlayStation 3 one's older anyway, so I'd rather have that one. Yeah, it's – well, it's a cool kiosk because it's like it's, – yeah. it's got that – you know, it's got that very, like, slick, rounded look. And yeah. um, it's just – it's kind of like one of the last PlayStation kiosks that was that was really cool and it had that kind of heavy look to it. You know, they started going a little bit more minimal, I feel mm -hmm. like, after that. And um, so it was, it's very cool. Yours looks like it has everything on it. And and um, that TV that's on there, was that the TV that it came with? Mm -hmm. That's the original. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because, you know, Sony always used their uh, – brow. how do you pronounce that? Bravia? 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 Bravia, yeah. Yeah, um, because, you know, the ones they use in the kiosk, they're commercial grade. So it's not like one you would buy at your house or whatever. I mean – it's it's the best of the best screens because it's if it's at the store promoting their product they want the games to look ridiculous right and then when you get home you know it don't look that great <laughs> yeah 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 you so, plug yeah, it in and you're like original. why does this look as crispy as the, the store model exactly they already got your money so they don't care after that <laughs> but yeah that's that's a good one I like the uh, the PS3 one uh, thank you Chris. Chris Harris, always always sharing my stream. Appreciate you. Uh, hope you're having a good evening. Um, wait, Joel is like so. You know, Joel is like a a kiosk guy, right? Like Retro Lizard. He's mm. he collects. He has a shitload of kiosks. Um, he said it should have a Sony PS3 3D TV. Oh, well, yeah. So he collects a ton of. I'm trying to see if I can like grab these messages but it's not giving me the option to import the link anyways he collects a ton of them um he's got i know he sold off a few joel which were the the latest ones that you sold off like what are the major ones that you still have um but he had like an xbox one kiosk uh that he had picked up and mm. he has some nintendo ones uh i think Maybe a PS2. The same one that came in the mm -hmm. PS3 bundle with TV was the same TV on the PS3 kiosk. Interdasting. Mm -hmm. I sold N64, Sega, and GameCube. Yeah, so he had, he had those are cool ones. That I think the Nintendo is probably the most sought after ones and the most expensive ones. Um, now, they had a tar because see, I'm in a I don't know if he's in this group. I wouldn't be surprised, but there's this group on Facebook called the Kiosk um, Kiosk and Display Collectors, I think. Anywho, um, they had a Tari one also, which was pretty wild. The Jaguar. Oh, yeah, had, yeah. Oof, that kiosk is pretty rare. Yeah, it's a badass kiosk too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they had, you know, uh, they had, I think it was, it was either PS2 or PS3, but they even had a, a, a dedicated Blockbuster kiosk just for the PlayStation 3, I believe. It was like Blocky or whatever. I don't know. Oh, okay. There's there's so many. They're all badass, but some get really pricey. Dude, um, the Jaguar one though, I was, cause I was asking Joel about that not long ago. And, um, sorry, I got to adjust this. It's like my lumbar back here killing me. 
Um, I was asking him about it though, because I have a Jaguar. I love the, the the Jaguar just for the nostalgia. It's not a great system, but there are some good games on it. Um, yeah. And I was looking at those, and I'm like, dang, these things are like expensive. They're pricey, but they're so cool. I'm like, you know, can you get them for cheap? And he was basically like, no. <laughs> He's like, yeah. no, they're not cheap um because there's just not very many of them i remember playing on one though we had this store called mm. playco toys and i think kb i think at kb as well and i remember they always had the snowboarding game on display mm. at those stores like vat israel or something uh snow now have you ever been to nebraska furniture mart do y'all have one out there no, no? Okay. so we have one out here and they have a PlayStation Five kiosk out there. I think it's badass. It's and it's, a, it's I think it's a standalone one. It's real wide or whatever. But damn, that thing's bad. And my friend had one, but I think he sold it for like twenty five hundred. Really? A PS so yeah. PS Five kiosk. Yeah. There's of course you got you, the ones in Target that are just like a. Uh, it's something just plain that just sits on like a uh, glass display. Mm -hmm. But the Nebraska one, it's like a full blown, uh, full blown standalone. Could you try again? I've got to look Dang for. Uh... Okay, hold on. Wait, let me see if I can pull this onto our screen over here. Is this the right one? Maybe. Nope. Hi. Uh, let me see. There we go. All right. Let oh, yeah. See, Retro Lizard said, I want the PS1 so bad. <laughs> the PS5 one, not. I bet. It's bad. I would love, um, like, something old, like a, like a PS1, like PlayStation 1, like original. Mm -hmm. Oh, with, yeah. With the TV and everything. Um, or... N64 would be cool, but I've Dreamcast would be like my number one. If I could get one mm -hmm. kiosk, I'd want a Dreamcast kiosk. Yeah, uh, those are pretty dope. Where is the freaking link to this thing here? Border. All right, I'm on the struggle bus right now. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Boom. All right. No, no, wait, cancel. No, 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 no. All right, so, oh, I did want to ask you about at game stuff, but we'll look. So PS5 kiosk, and you said Nebraska, Nebraska? Yeah. When I was in the military, Nebraska. I used to have a recruit that was from Nebraska. And mm. we used to always mess with, mess with him because we're like, what is there to do out there besides drugs? And he would, <laughs> he would be like, this recruit doesn't know nothing. And we'd be like, ah, the guide from Nebraska. We'd call it Nebraska. That's funny. And we're just like screwing with him all the time. And he'd, he'd try not, not to laugh so hard. All right, Nebraska. Now, I don't know which one it was, but uh, there was a kiosk that was, it was either a PS1 or a PS2, but it was a Pepsi uh, version. Pepsi, oh. Yeah, Joel I has had Pepsi, Pepsi on stuff. The Joel's a kiosk. freak like that. He has Pepsi stuff. <laughs> Messiah. What the fuck <laughs> yeah. is that? Uh, I think that's it. Let me see. It's crisp looking. Okay. So, yeah, but Joel has like Pepsi stuff and he's got. Oh, it's, maybe this is. Is this it? It's either, it's either that one or a click out of that. Let's see. Um, oh, just like. Uh, go go up a little bit. Hold on, this mm -hmm. was I think the one that I was in there. Uh, so we got the one that's like mounted on the display case. Yeah, that one I think is like at Target and uh, Best Buy one. and stuff. Is this PS Five? Oh, PS Four. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, that one you clicked on. That one's it. Yeah, that's the Nebraska one, yep. This one right here. That thing's bad, yeah. I mean, in person, you know, it glows and stuff. It's just sick. Right. I like because the, 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 um, 
the uh, shapes glow. Wait, so what is this? I don't know. Okay, so this one is one. is the one that you're talking about. This is the Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Nebraska. Yeah. Game. Yeah, that's sick looking. Yeah, that's cool. I bet that bitch is heavy. Because, you know, these things are made out of metal. Oh, like, really? That's not plastic? I don't think that one is. It looks plastic. Shit, unless I'm on drugs. I have no idea. <laughs> Let me see what Joel is saying. There is a tabletop at Best Buy, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Groups from West Virginia. He was neighbors with the infamous dude. Rev says hi. He is raiding in WoW. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rev. Hi, Lindsay. But yeah, that's that's a cool one. But I will tell you though, this the PlayStation Three kiosk. It's it's mostly metal, and then you know there's some plastic pieces. But that thing is heavy. Yeah. You wouldn't think it was, but like just the um, the top where the uh, the frame that's holding the TV in the back, because it's like a security door on the back, and it's all metal. On the, hooking on the back of the TV, that thing is heavy as shit. This is like wall mounted. This this kiosk is like part wall mounted. It's almost like you could put it anywhere. It's pretty cool. Maybe it's, those are from Louis Vuitton. I know, right? <laughs> They'd look like. Damn, it. those look bad. Yeah, that that would be really. Cool. That's almost something you could make too, like relatively easily. Like you know what I mean? Like you could make a kiosk yeah. like that. It's pretty sweet. You know, that looks like that's probably from a Sony store. Right. This that's what I was thinking. Like these ones, it's very there's or a so major, much of it. Like a E three type event, but maybe something else. Yeah. Like these, that. These glass windows. I think it's like a Sony outlet or something or a Cause do you see the, the sculpture of the, the shapes right there that are glowing by itself in the middle of the floor? Yeah. The ones that's standing up. Yeah. If that was in a retail store, I'd pick that bitch up and run out with it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks heavy though oh i'm sure damn just go in there with like a rip your belt off and then like throw it on the inside and strap it on your back and run out you ain't kidding that uh, is awesome looking what's up galaga guy welcome uh drug shootouts oh yeah yeah lots lots of meth in certain parts of nebraska i hear I heard that's an awesome store thing's huge okay so wait a minute they did attack on pre-order fx legends 4k attack from mars collector's edition is that like a skin oh boy what is that oh yeah didn't they uh announce that uh, like a month ago maybe oh i don't know Oh, yeah, you don't keep up with that game, do you? No, nah, not really. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't. I mean, I'm like their V-Pin is, is kind of the coolest thing that they do. I mean, I like their their little multi-cade thing, but not the new one, not the KI yeah. one. It looks like somebody barfed Jago and Saberwolf all over it. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's a skin. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I like the topper, though. Joel, can you make me a topper like this for my attack on Mars, please? Um, oh, that's... Wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was another thing. Oh, you can buy it with a package. Okay, Collector's Edition fourteen ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine with optional surround sound. So another $500 for surround sound? No, thank you. Nineteen ninety nine. What are you talking about? Right, so right here, if you look right here, so there's mm -hmm. two there's two options. Mm -hmm. See, are you saying that price on there? It's showing fifteen hundred and two thousand. Yeah, so it's fifteen two thousand dollars. So it's fifteen hundred for the four K Attack from Mars Collector's Edition. Collector's Edition. And then for $500 more, you get optional surround sound feedback kit pre-installed. <sighs> that's, that's getting, that's getting up there though for V-Pin. I mean, like, unless it was like, 
like somebody's custom V pin, you know, uh, like Vic VP or even the ones that Joel does. Um, yeah. Like that's that's starting to get up there. I don't know how nice these are though. I've never played on one. Um. But I just like it's like with the, it's with these with these like manufactured ones. I'm like, dude, I don't want to pay very much. I mean, I have Attack on Mars from A one up, and I paid, you know, about two hundred bucks for that. Well, you you know when they first announced the 4K. Well, let's go back. So I have the HD uh, Legends pinball. Do you have that one? No, I only have one. I just have the Attack on Mars, and that's that's it. Because I'm like, oh, okay, the arcade one up. Yeah, okay. if I get another pin, it's gonna be either a a real pin, or mm. like a badass B pin. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. See, I got the original. Uh, legends pinball hd now the only reason i got that one because sam's was closing it out and i saw it i was like damn that's pretty neat you know because i wouldn't have paid seven or eight hundred when they first came out for that right and my mom was with me and she's like you want me to buy it for you for christmas i was like <laughs> all right <laughs> right and for 3.99 that i think that was a great deal for that um and then when they were gonna, they announced the 4K version. I, I got super excited because we didn't know anything about it yet. I thought I thought they were gonna make the screen maybe a little bigger, maybe like 40 inch or whatever. Uh -huh. And it, it was, and the price was gonna be like you know, I was thinking probably a thousand. Okay. And then when they announced it, they what pissed me off is they had a time slot on prices. The first time slot, eleven ninety nine, right? Okay. And then the next one was what, like twelve ninety nine or like a couple of hundred bucks more. Mm. And then when all the pre orders were over with, they said it was gonna be uh what it is now, fourteen ninety nine or something. I'm like, get the f you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't do that. Yeah. What if you want one but you gotta wait a couple of weeks? You're screwed. Now you're that was bad business right there. It should be one price, no matter when you order the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, I know Mensa, something happened with Mensa. I don't remember the whole story right now, but um, where, because they thought it was going to be like a limited edition of the Adams Family one or whatever. Mm. And then it ended up being like just like the standard edition. I forget exactly what the story is. I don't want to like botch it, but um, yeah. it was it was something like that. Mensa has been a member for one month. Thanks, Mensa. Um, but anyways, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it their their V pin is like nice for a manufactured like home arcade V pin. I just don't think it's worth anywhere near fifteen hundred dollars. You know, I I think. Mm -hmm. I think maybe for a premium manufactured V-Pin, like a grand is like kind of, you know, the the upper limit, I would say. I don't know. Joel, what do you think? Are you still in here? I'm curious to see what you think. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I was I wanted to go to Arcade 1-Up site and see if they still have any of their V-Pin on here or if they had like took it all off. Uh, I finally uh, got rid of my last one. Oh, really uh my attack from mars i was having so much trouble get, getting rid of it like on uh marketplace i had like 50 messages people were interested and they always flaked out it's just yeah. like trolls or whatever and then i hit one of my best friends up and i was like hey you know that attack pinball arcade one up i got oh yeah hey you want to buy it for 300 bucks he's like yes sir i was like good deal so I sold it to them and him and his kids and wife play it all the time. So oh nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. My will. my kiddos like it. Um, yeah, but the you know that one and the Star Wars one were cool. Uh, and Best Buy has been like clearancing the crap out of a lot of their arcade one up stuff. So Attack from Mars was mm -hmm. one of them. I think they clearanced it for one fifty, and then uh, the Simpsons was like another one that they did recently and. Um, there was one other, oh, was it Big Blue? I think Big Blue that they clearanced for like 100 or 150, some just super cheap, right? Um, yeah. 
but they started canceling orders too though because one of my friends the simpsons came up he ordered his and i it said they were about to ship his he might have got it but he heard from other people they just canceled the shit i guess it was a mistake or something or oh. they sold too many and they didn't have them <laughs> oh crazy yeah but yeah it looks like they still are selling their oh What's you can buy it you them? can you can buy it direct so attack from mars is 499 normally mm. 749 which is that's like crazy to me that they're selling these for 749 a pop um but then they have all their third party retailers that are selling it uh best buy canada and then yeah star wars they have 749 and marvel you got a super chat <laughs> uh let me see ezekiel star wars. readings Thank, from WrestleMania, holy sh cow, that's cool, dude. Right on. Thank you for uh, oh. for stopping in from WrestleMania. Hopefully uh, you got some pictures. Maybe we'll see some pictures on Twitter. <clears throat> um, and thanks for the four ninety nine super chat. Yeah. Now you. you can buy a Starbucks coffee. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. It's, but anyways, these are... You know, I, I just wouldn't pay anywhere close. I would say like 350 would be like my cutoff for one of these ones. Um, but that's, yeah. so they still have them up. I mean, they must have, I wonder if they're still making them. And then they have the 499 Marvel versus Capcom 2, which is yeah. pre order on Amazon. Oh, okay. Dude, this is like, What's so ridiculous about this is that they did not change the hardware. And I talked to Mike B about that on his show, but it just still blows my mind that they didn't change out the hardware knowing that MVC2 doesn't play properly online, you know, without mm -hmm. the rollback. It just plays like trash. Did they ever fix it? No. I mean, it's better now, but it's still, it doesn't have rollback and, you know, I know that people just don't have a good experience playing it online mm. at all. Like there hasn't been. Um, so now, is this just a straight reskin on this? Oh yeah. Well, it's a deluxe. So the first release had a riser, but it's mm. just, this oh, is, okay. yeah, this is just a straight reskin. And I thought like they could have at least done it in the HS five because you know, they have that model now, but they went with the midway style and I was just like, I don't get it, man. I mean, I do like there, the, there's the whole argument of, you know, back in the day, like it didn't matter what cabinet the game was in. Like if they had the kit, they were just going to throw it in the cabinet that they had and you no. were going to play the game. You didn't give a shit, right? But mm -hmm. I mean, now when you're looking at it from like a point of a quote unquote authenticity, anybody who played a lot of Capcom fighters would know like, okay, this game was mainly in certain types of cabs. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I never saw MVC two or never remember seeing it in a midway style cab. I always remember seeing it on like a pedestal or, or something well, like that. See, the problem with Arcade 1-Up, why they get everything wrong, though, there's no gamers that work there. Yeah, not okay? anymore. No. Uh, John D is probably the only gamer there. I mean, the guy that, that's the spokesperson, hey, Paul. The, the Cyrus guy, he don't know nothing about gaming. And I caught this a long time ago. Oh, Cyrus? When, yeah. Dude, what are you talking about? He's like four-time champion of uh, Evo. Oh, like, yeah, he don't know jack shit about anything. Because I forgot what video. Keo Daikin uh, went to, I don't know if it was E3 or, or, where, or whatever it was, some event. And Cyrus there, that was the first time we saw him. Mm -hmm. And he asked, Keo Daikin asked him something about a game. The dude froze. And it's like, Damn, you don't know that? But I guess if he's only like 15 or 16 or something, then, you know. 
probably don't know it. I'm, I'm serious though that they just he's he's just a marketing guy you know he's just a very cheery marketing guy he's he's probably like very hip with what yeah. to market which is why the x-men cab is what they did which is why it sold out really quick um i don't know if they have more orders open on amazon now but you can see like how many they that people have ordered and um Oh yeah, I checked it out a week ago and it said uh, 600 or something was sold past week. It was like, shit. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's doing well, you know? Yeah. And so, so that's what, but he is good at marketing and he knows how to make something appeal to the consumer, not the enthusiast. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, people who are getting this, I would say majority of the people, not all of them, but majority of the people who are getting these are either fans of the series and it's like a collector thing to them or they just want it because they think it's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And that's who he appeals to because that's where their strongest market is going to be. And, you know, whereas before John D, he was very oriented somewhere between that and like the community. And I think the community kind of like sucked him in, in a way, um, you know, and, and all the enthusiasts in the community are probably like regretting the fact that they were bullied him kind of, and he's gone now, you know? Um, yeah. They, the community is what killed John D I believe, you know, I think, I think they played a big role. In, yeah in that um but at the end of the day what you're left with now is kind of the licensing skeleton of what was once there and a yeah. new marketing uh aspect for it you know and that is that they want to stick to things that they know they can sell they want to stick to things that are going to bring them you know yeah uh, the return that they want see i just honestly don't feel like they're gonna bring out anything new i think it's just gonna be the same cabs maybe changed up a little bit or reskin i mean i just really don't think they're gonna bring out any new game yeah unless I mean, if i'm missing something but yeah i well you know they're they've done some nice things and i feel like all of this was done like before john left though like um like these pac-man deluxe cabs and yeah. the xl i mean those are cool they're more reminiscent of you know what the originals were um, i like those like the yeah the, and the pac-man design yeah it's it right there that blue one it's super oh, yeah. close, you know, and the Galaga one, I really think the Galaga one is cool. I think that one was like two ninety nine when it first came out because they had them on sale. Um, mm. But the the Mortal Kombat 2 Deluxe, that's a cool one. I've seen people do really cool things with that, like reskin it to MK4, and they actually have like an MK4 PCB in it, which is cool. That's I mean, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um so it's nice to have the smaller form factor as it's supposed to be. You know, the problem is the price. Like, I, I'm not going to pay $4.99 for any of those. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would pay maybe, like, $2.99. I would, I would pay that maybe, you know, depending on what it was. But I'm not, I'm not looking at buying any more of these unless it's something, like, insanely awesome. Like, and I don't even know what yeah. that would be because I have a really awesome multi-cade, so. Yeah. Um, Paul says, four-time Wheel of Fortune champion. <laughs> There's always Pac-Man, <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the I like the original, the OG deluxe one, though, that they have. And the thing is, like, with arcade one-ups, it's nice that they have, like, the form factor, and it's nice that they have the size, though. That's the appealing thing yeah. to me about one-ups is the size. And the fact that they have the form factor and the size it is what would make it appeal to me. You know, before buying a bunch of shark fin ones, like, I don't want a bunch of regurgitated stuff that doesn't look anything like it. Like, if I, if I get it, I want it for a specific reason, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, you know... I mean, they're the only ones doing what they're doing still at the end of the day. And I don't, 
I, I mean, I don't really... The Fast and Furious, the re, that was a really cool concept. Um, and uh, it was really fun to play on the link up mm. two racers. It was really fun to play. Um, but again, like the pricing and, and the overall, there's just a couple things, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Don't, don't take me <clears throat> down that wormhole. Why did you take me to that website? I don't know. Let's look more on their website. What else did they get? <laughs> <laughs> the infinity game table is like supposedly their best selling thing. Isn't it like $8,000? I read an article on that. You know, um, somebody wrote an article on that, and they that thing got a, an award or something. Right. And and they said that Arcade One Up, all their money they make is from this. Yeah, they make a lot it's, of money from the. Yeah, most of their money they make is from this thing. Yeah. And I've never tried it out or anything, and there's a reason why, because basically I see a little LCD screen on uh legs and that bitch is a thousand dollars dude yeah dude. it looks no. fun like if you were just you know if you just had one it looks yeah. fun but it's like it doesn't look a thousand dollars fun i feel like it's their <sighs> it's their quote-unquote louis vuitton of you know like the kardashians are like buying that yeah. for people for christmas <laughs> i mean why doesn't it have like a gold flake frame or something right. for that kind of prize Jeez. <laughs> yeah i i know that's true i think i think like uh even like an aluminum or bronze frame would have looked like way better that's kind of kind of yeah. busted for a thousand bucks um but i don't i oh do they still have ki pro let me see didn't they only make 500 of those that's what they were sp that supposedly was the thing. I mean, when I had one, I had like the number for mine and I, I can't remember what it was now, but um, mm -hmm. let me see. Killer Instinct. Oh, there it is. Still not sold out. So they didn't sell 500 of them. Well, I don't know. Is it, hold on, wait. Is it limited edition still kicking up? Blah, blah, blah. Additional. Does it come hmm. with the mat? <laughs> yeah, the, the anti anti fatigue mat. Um, oh yeah, I guess it does, and the the sign too. Oh yeah, I still have the sign, the Jago sign. It would have been cooler if they had like if they did like orchid or something. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Well, it doesn't say available. anything about it being a limited edition on here though, which is interesting. <laughs> um. I yeah. wonder, like, I wonder what the sales are like with this thing. I mean, since they still have it up, they must be, they must have produced more. So that's interesting. <clears throat> hmm. Definitely not worth a thousand dollars. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Not even close. Six ninety nine at best. Yeah. Um, the idea was cool, but man, they uh. They should have done some things differently, and and the the whole uh, faux tea molding thing killed me. And the cut off art, like man, come, mm. on. come on. Yeah, the chrome tea molding is what I was like, really. You know what? If it would have been actual tea molding, it would have been better. But what is it actually, anyways? It's just like a. It's pretty much like a spray on like chrome i mean your hands oh really like... it's not it's not tea molding on there no 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 it's not and i know they can oh, do tea man. molding because on wheel of fortune they did tea molding so mm. i know they could do it but they they've like they didn't do it and i was like why 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 the, why? the, the worst business decision they've ever made at that company was announcing the killer instinct and people were pre-ordering that crap, and then they announced this, like, what, a couple of weeks later or a month or something? It's like, wow. Yeah, but they didn't have, like, the official thing up on their page for a while because it got delayed for a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't understand that. They, they should have did 
when they did the pro, they should have done Killer Instinct. They should have did either a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat because those two games are more popular than Killer Instinct. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. But I think they did have a proto for Street Fighter. They had an HS5 proto. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I saw the picture. Yeah. And uh, it, the concept was cool, but you know, again, then you're talking about what, like a grand? No, no, thanks. Like I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna throw down a grand on one of those. And then, then you do get into the argument of, well, I could just get, you know, an, a real arcade cab, and then yeah, just throw an LCD monitor in it, and and you know, use arcade one up hardware, even like. So, well, see, now I'm going to bring you back to at games. <laughs> yeah. When you showed me this earlier, and then it had one of the additions on there for $2,000. Look, viewers, and all y'all YouTuber people and stuff, okay? Uh -oh. If you buy one of those for $2,000, I will especially make a roast video of your ass on my channel. Because $2,000 for that, dude, you, you're smoking something I don't want to see because really that's a lot of money wait you that. said the first one was 750 yeah uh when it first came out mm. uh the the legends pinball hd yeah yeah is that yeah. what you're talking about yeah yeah it came i think it was 749 when it came out or eight i'm not sure but the 4k one two thousand dollars i mean get out I mean, it, that's crazy. It does look nice, though. Like, it does have like a, a premium look to it nice. in the pictures. Oh, well, I can Photoshop some pretty that, pictures. Look, that topper right <laughs> there is worth at least two hundred alone. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is crazy price for that. But you can play like a ton of games on this, right? It's not, you're not just limited to. Well, yeah, like the HD or whatever. I mean, if you download all their look at, tables. Look at this guy. He is so happy playing it, though. Hey, at least he's not Photoshop like Arcade 1UP did their people on the machines. <laughs> that was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, like the one I got, you know, if you download all the games that are available, there's probably 126 ish tables mm -hmm. and it's real fun i mean when i had all three of the arcade one up ones um they they were fun but then when i got on this one you know the 1080p screen on this one made a hell of a lot difference yeah um, yeah even though the tables ain't you know as la di da as the arcade one up ones because you know they didn't have a license to them or whatever yeah but oh let me let me say hi to the because i'm sorry i've missed a lot of stuff in the chat here but uh we got stock one up in here what is up um and what did i miss here best arcade stick with second three arcade not a arcade if it's not inverted buttons with the long joystick um and we're talking giant android tablet yeah that was true about the infinity table uh fomo Vince is spamming my chat. <laughs> Y'all got to school me. Uh, Chrome T molding reminded me of ALU. Yeah. Uh, JJ is in here. What's up, JJ? Uh, hey, Sheline Gaming and Twisted Chris. You guys going to chat about the prototype once to scale Burger Time replica cab? Yeah, I actually, I was going to look at the uh, quarter arcades. Um, so, good question. Uh, and then Galaga guy said, I got my HD for $200 at Sam's club. Ooh. Yeah. See, if you get one for $200 brand new, it's like, how can you substantiate paying 1500? Um, you can't find a KI board for less than 1000 that, and that's true. Uh, finding a KI mm. one or KI two board, finding that original hardware is going to be very difficult, but, but you can totally you know, emulate it on your own. If you want to play online, you can do, um, what's it called? Bytecade or obvi obviously Bytecade or, you know, the A1UP version. I think their software for KI was their like winning point. I know they had trouble in the beginning, but after Code Mystics like fixed it up and updated everything, I mean, it was really, 
really great. The online play was really great. Um, so anyways, what's up guys? Thanks for joining us. Um, this was something that actually Mensa brought up to me earlier, and I'm curious what you think about it, but Apple is opening up the app store to retro game emulators. Um, it mm. says game emulators have long been banned on the app store and they were one of the big reasons users in Europe might seek out third party marketplaces. And one of, this is an interesting thing about iPhones is, I mean, you know, like, do you have an iPhone? Uh, all the cool people do. Okay. So do you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, but I, but I have an Android also, but I use my iPhone as my phone. Um, mm -hmm. and you get, you know, FaceTime and, and, uh, iMessage and all that, but it's limited in what you can do with it as far as like putting third party apps on it and stuff like that. So I, that's yeah. why I go to my Android for that. Right. Um, and it's, you've been able to do emulation on Android forever, which is an awesome thing that you can do, but transferring files to an iPhone still to this day is like, you can, mm. you can download files onto there and store them in your file area, but you can't do anything with them. You know, like if it's a zip file or whatever, like you can't really do. Well, you know why they like... do that, right? No, why? that's because well... Apple is known to have, uh, no viruses oh right right it's a security thing i mean a lot of yeah. a lot of the stuff that revolves around their their phone is is security and like copyright oh, yeah. or what do you call it patent infringement stuff like that um but so i find it interesting that they're going to open the app store to retro game emulators and then my question is if they're doing this, is it going to be licensing? So I'm going to read this. Is it going to be licensed games? I'm going to read this a little bit. Apple okay. is loosening up its app store restrictions and opening the marketplace up to retro game emulators. I'll zoom in. Uh, Apple announced that game emulators can come to the app store globally and offer downloadable games. Offer downloadable games. Apple says those games must comply with all applicable laws though an indication it will ban apps that provide pr pirated titles uh, the move should allow the retro console emul emulators already on android at least those that are left to bring their apps to the iphone game emulators have long been banned from ios leaving iphone owners in the search of workarounds via jailbreaking or other workarounds uh, they're also one of the key reasons so far that iPhone owners in the European Union might check out third-party app stores now that they're allowed in the region. Apple's change today could head that off. So basically what they're saying, what I'm understanding this as, is we're going to allow you to have um, to download emulators, but those emulators have to download licensed paid-for games. Like... That's what I'm getting from this. Like what though? Because, well, like I mean, if, it... if you have like a Game Boy emulator, right? Uh -huh. And then you go like, okay, you open the emulator and then you have a list of games that you can download, right? But all of those games have to be like licensed or you have to pay for the <laughs> license to download them, you know? Yeah. Um. It says the change seems to come in response to the antitrust law filed with the United States, states, which accuses Apple of attempting to stomp out both cloud game streaming apps and super apps. Apple recently started letting cloud streaming services like Xbox, Cloud Gaming, and GeForce Now onto the App Store. Yeah. Well, there was that huge thing with the Fortnite, too. I don't know if you remember that when they removed Fortnite from the App Store. Hmm. Um, a lot of people were pissed about that. That was around like the iPhone 12. Let me see if I'm missing anything in the chat. Uh, we got Dan Z. What's up? Uh, Paul Bear says, Jade, we have to figure out a way to get you to Midwest Gaming Classic ne next year. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if some sponsor hits me up and they want to fly me out there, I'd totally, totally be down and pay for my hotel room. And, uh, all that good stuff, food, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but yeah, so what's up, Dan? And did I miss someone? No, I didn't. All right, Mensa, uh, you don't just download the emulator and then jailbreak the games. 
Yeah, I but I don't I feel like it's not going to be that simple because of all their security protocols and stuff cuz you can't can you even jailbreak iPhone 4, or iOS what is it 17? Can you jailbreak that yet? Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Apple's are a tough cookie. Yeah, yeah, totally. To do. I mean, I had a friend at work. He I was like, "Why don't you ever get an iPhone cuz they're some of the best phones." Because like if because you can't download porn. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why he had Android, because he was a weird guy. He would download the crap from his, uh, you know, onto his Android. And then when he got home, the uh, stuff he had on his phone, he'd burn it to DVDs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. That guy was hood. <laughs> That's hardcore. Funny. That is hardcore. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. What's the point of opening it up to emulators if you have to have licensing? Like, I don't exactly. I'm confused too. Um, yeah, I don't get that either. Apple will just brick your phone. Yeah, I yeah. I'm I'm confused. So I it's like they're saying you can have you can download emulators on here to play games for older systems, but you have to purchase the game which is like purchasing the license for a game to play it. Maybe purchase the licensing through Apple Store, maybe? Well, yeah, and that's that's what I'm wondering, like if they're going to be like co-oping with, you know, probably like Nintendo or Sega or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't see them doing it another way. Plus, you know, Apple takes like a huge chunk of their um, like app developers they take like a massive chunk of their profit if it's a um, purchasable uh, app. Let me see. Um, yeah, I love Apple, but I know they're greedy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, you know how much it costs to make an iPhone? <clears throat> yeah, I, I saw the video somebody uh, posted about that. It's and it like, wasn't much at all. No, it's like it's it's ridiculous. It's like ten dollars. It costs ten dollars yeah. to make an iPhone. And we're paying a thousand dollars for them. <laughs> I have not. Yeah, I have not like researched that further. But the guy who was yeah. talking about it was like a, a tech industry guy, and he seemed like you know he knew what he was talking about. And I it, I need to look into that. But I just recently saw that, and I was like, dude, if they if they really do cost ten dollars to make like a thousand dollars is foul um, well you you know that apple is the richest company in the world you know they're they're worth over like two trillion dollars now yeah trillion i think they're um microsoft is like in first place uh because there's 10 companies that are like the top like highest grossing companies and Microsoft is like number one. I know Apple's in there, like in the top probably three. And I don't think so. Let's see. Who? What company is worth more? Ten corporations. Or Microsoft. Let me see. Biggest companies in the world. Let me see. Oh, well, they passed them now? Walmart, Let's Amazon. See. China Petroleum. This one's different. Apple's number five. Microsoft Exxon. passed. Oh, these Apple are to become the valuable company in the world. No f and shit. Uh, they must have just did that. I think. Oh, this one, yeah. So Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, of course, oil, big oil, um, Alphabet, Google, Amazon, Meta Platforms, Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, and I forget, like, they're like a f uh, diversified investments. They're like an investing oh. firm. Um, Ellie Lilly and TS. So semiconductors and pharmaceuticals, of course. So you have the top 10 companies globally. Semiconductors, pharmaceuticals um, in India by marketing valuation in 2024. Pharmaceuticals, diversified investments, social media, e-commerce technology, oil and gas technology, technology, technology. So that's in um, Forbes India. That's in India, and then Messiah. these 
this says in the world, so I guess this would be more accurate. Walmart, Amazon, uh, China Petroleum, PetroChina, Apple is number five, Exxon, Shell, CVS, United Health, and Volks Volkswagen. What? Interesting. Yeah, see, a couple of years ago, Apple was number one. Messiah was, says, I think Microsoft has always been on top. No, because I, I would look it up every year because I was always curious. Apple was number one a few years ago, and I wonder if Microsoft uh, boosted up since they were buying all these uh, big-ass companies, and it just well AI out of water now. AI has a lot to do with... Um, mm -hmm. with these companies like their relationship to AI and stuff. I mean like Nvidia is freaking insane right now. Um but stocks are doing kind of they're kind of in a slump right now. I mean they'll go yeah. back up, but uh okay, so let let's let's go over here and check this out. Um cuz I just kind of I knew about these before and I thought it was like Numskull, wasn't it? So did Numskull change their names to the quarter arcades, like, I'm so clueless about this. <clears throat> I want to say uh, the the numbskull weren't they always just available on this justgeek.com? They didn't have like numbskull.com, did they? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but let me see. Let me see, because numbskull, uh, num. Caves. What's up, Bose Nose Techmo? Is this oh. a tech stock stream? I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> tech stock stream, yeah. Um, Numskull Designs, maybe, is what it is. Is it Numskull Designs? Yeah. Boom. All right. So oh, we okay. got some. So they got their... Oh, it's a Destiny 9 demon. Like, yeah, I want that on my couch, please. <laughs> so when my guests come over they shit themselves <laughs> um doom figures quarter arcades okay so they sell quarter arcades through num school mm. pepsi seven up usb hubs oh that's cool i like green um this is also appealing let's see and they're these are really cool and i like the size difference but at the same time it's like more space you know more shelf space so it's mm -hmm. kind of like, ah. Um, they even got a trash can. Oh, my goodness. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Wait, what is this? Order Arcade's wallpaper. Oh, it's like a brick wallpaper. Oh, cute. You get really into this. Now, you know what? Now oh, we're yeah. going to have to dive into Reddit and see, like, the world of quarter Arcade uh, models or something. Like, there's something cool, I guarantee you. Um yeah. Okay, so wait, this is Quarter Arcades, TMM Taito, Elevator Action, Space Invaders. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Zookeeper. All right. Oh, so they sell them just through Just Geek. I guess so. Um, yeah, you can't buy them on the Numskull website, it looks like. Right, not off the Numskull, yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I feel really ignorant right now, but I don't know like what their part in it is like numbskull design. So I don't know if it's like they help design them or what they do, because when I've seen videos about them, it's like people refer to them as like numbskull um, quarter yeah. arcades or something. So I don't know if it's like a joint thing or a sub company or what, what the deal is. Maybe they, maybe they fund it. Who knows? All right. They're pretty expensive though. Yeah, that's. I saw where, the Ninja Turtle one. I mean, like these ones aren't bad. Two, two twenty nine. I mean, compared to uh, what do you call it? What's the other mini one six scale? New wave. Uh, new wave. Yeah, new wave. You know, around one eighty to two to two hundred. Um, yeah. Let's see. Damage. Sorry, Chum dropping in, hitting a like and dropping out. I'm at Arcade Pinball. Nice. Nice. Have fun. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, 
Bonos Tecmo says, yes, my mutual fund has MS and NVIDIA. So yes, keep it coming. Yeah. Uh, oh, James, wait, where's James? I know. Oh, James hates everything has pictures on his community page of the burger time. If you're looking for, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did see pictures of the burger time. I'm trying to think of where I saw them, but, um, someone was like recently showcasing it. Let me see if I can search for it. It looks really, it looks really nice though. Um, no, 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 no. Wasn't the Ninja Turtle ones, wasn't it like 369 or something for those? I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. A Burger Time Quarter Arcade. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess um, I might have to pull up me Twitter. Oh, here it is. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. What the? Oh, are those full size? Interdasting. Yeah, it's not on here. I did see it on wider though, so I'm gonna probably uh, go over. There. Ooh, yeah, I was a little wrong. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Limited Edition comes with a stool, little peepers, and crap. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Oh my god, dude, that's that's too much. I'm sorry, but that's yeah, too the much. JustGeek.com. Where you buy them that yeah, there's all the prices on there. Goodness. Four hundred dollars for that? Yeah, that's that's extreme. That's like you we need like a Rick uh what's his name? Scream right now. I Woo! wouldn't be surprised though if P dubs has a couple of those. Um I think he does. I think he has a couple of them. I think he got some for review. Yeah. Uh, what? Wait, hold on. Am I still okay there? You can still see the browser. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm about to pull up my, my Twitter. They had a Galaga one though. It sold out. Damn. That thing looks bad though. Really? Yeah. What the hell is going on here? Why is this not letting me? Ooh. Uh, pro. I will rage. I will rage on the. Okay, let me see. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let me out. Why is it not letting me out? Um. All right, guys, just give me a second here. Technical difficulty, nothing new on this channel when we're live streaming. Um, I am just... Hey, are you going to get the full uh, solar eclipse, by the way? Yep. Yeah, I you are. Right, right in the line of it. We already got our special glasses and everything. <laughs> right. And then when you put them on, the... The uh, front of them are like silver or whatever. They look like some space age shit. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I put some on and, and my daughter, she comes up and says, you can't see anything, can you? And then she puts her iPhone, her the flashlight up to it. Uh -huh. All I see is a little bitty dot. Uh -huh. I'm like, wow, those are. Yeah, I even got T-shirts. Oh, really? <laughs> my mom bought me. Yeah, she, she bought. um two different ones from Walmart and it says like totally eclipse or, or total darkness or whatever. And it has the date and stuff, you know, Dallas, Texas, it's pretty badass. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. Account. <laughs> Bitch, get, what the, Oh my God. Why is it so difficult to sign out of Twitter? It's, Mm. Mm. I don't think I have a Twitter anymore. Uh, we can we can check. I can check for you. 
Well, while you're trying to figure that out, have you do you do you listen to rap? Uh, yeah. Any kind of rap or not? Have you heard I mean, the nothing new like nothing like super new? Have you heard of the uh, the new Eminem song? Yeah, I did. Um, I did see that. Yeah, Doomsday too. <sighs> oh, that's a good song. I I, I like haven't. Uh, I just heard like a, a snippet of it, so I haven't. I haven't heard oh. the, the whole song though. It's only two minutes. Come on now. <laughs> I dude, I'm getting like, um, you know, all the stuff that's going on with Diddy, and all that. Mm. I'm like, dude. I don't know what's going on in, in that industry, but I'm like, I don't even want to like listen to their music, man. Like, what are these like sacrificing goats and like singing chants while they, you know, in the background and 432 Hertz. I'm like, what is going on right now? Like I'm going to, you know, they're going to turn me into like devil tranny yeah. or something. I don't know. Well, See, I've been I've been listening to rap. For, I mean, I listen to everything, but I, you know, I was um, probably let's see, how old was I? Ninety-six. Uh, I was sixteen, or no, fifteen when I started listening to Tupac. I was on the Death Road side. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't on the Bad Boy Turd side. Right, right. I was on the Death Row. <laughs> yeah, Snoop Anyways. Dogg, Tupac. Oh yeah, I was working at Six Flags and. That's all I jammed, right? And um, and then I heard I, I liked Biggie or whatever. I did not. I never liked Puffy. And as I got older, I always had some kind of sense of of something weird with that guy. Um, just like a, a couple of other people too, like Vince McMahon. Let's go to that guy. I always had this weird feeling and thoughts. Something about this guy is just different, right? Now, I'm not saying it was going to come out later to what's happening or, you know, what accused of, but sometimes I can sense just some people kind of differently off or something. <clears throat> yeah. And then it comes out and I'm like, oh, shit. You know? Yeah. Well, but I hope he did anything. <sighs> Yeah, the, I mean, the P. Diddy thing is, is insane. Obviously, the Vince McMahon thing, you know. But there's the other aspect of, you know, how much of this stuff happens. You know, P. Diddy is yeah. is very believable to me, um, just based mm. on a lot of the things that I've seen. But there's the other aspect of how much does the music industry and Hollywood involve themselves in setting these people up when they want to get rid of them? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. because you can tell, you can tell by other things that have happened that there is a level of like this, this benevolent force coming from those industries that want to get rid of these people and want to make them look as bad as possible. Uh, Kanye West, perfect example of, yeah. of them going after someone, like going after someone. And then you've got, you know, um, Cat Williams, you've got, uh, um, you know, Tupac was was murdered yeah. we all know that we know tupac was murdered and now we're we're hearing and finding out that it could have been puffy that was like you know i knew it was i knew it was probably p diddy that did that when i was you know a lot younger it if you really think about it like the the beefs and stuff and you know you listen to every single song and, and this and that yeah kind of get a feeling on different things and then even on Eminem's song, uh, what was it? The Kill Shot. He even said at the end uh, something about Puffy. Uh, right. Having to do with that, you know, if you heard that song. And it's just like, you know, it yeah. all comes out in the end. There's there's a lot of stuff aimed in his direction. Like very, you know, that was cryptic. And I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a good, real quick. This is a good question from uh, Lady Jane. Uh, anyone have an idea of whether younger generations have any interest in arcade machines? I wonder what that will mean for the industry. And that that is a good question. And that's something that um, I've kind of discussed before, just like in relation to arcade one up. But I mean, what are your experience, experiences with with yours uh chris when it comes to you know arcades and playing them and stuff like that 
Um, you mean when it comes to like kids or whatever? Yeah. Well, I can tell you my my daughter don't care <laughs> for the arcades. Um, you know, the problem is is if 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 you didn't grow up in these types, you know, it, it all depends on the parent. You know, uh, if their kids are going to have any interest in it. Mm -hmm. Like, she's not. She just plays Xbox and PS5, you know, Fortnite and all that crap. Right. Um, now, her boyfriend has came up here a few times when she lets him. And uh, she lets he him. likes the stuff. Okay. Um, so, I guess it just depends, you know, especially, like, you know, the <sighs> men are going to more, like, get into it. Unless, you know, the female grew up into the arcade stuff, you know, back in the day. Right. But, I mean, you got to go to retro arcades to even, even play them, you know? Yeah. If you go to like, uh, what is that? Dave and Busters? Those are not real yeah, arcade no. machines in there. It's just right. garbage. Right. <laughs> well, and then you have like the, the modern aspect, which... Um, I was just at a round one bowling and they have like a really cool modern selection of games. Why isn't this going in here? Um, they have a really cool modern selection of games, you know, like DDR, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and a lot of those rhythm games. And then, so I think, I think that there will be an interest, but there won't be quite as much nostalgia surrounding yeah. it because of console gaming. Like when we came in to the world, um, there was, you know, it was like Atari and then eventually yeah. Nintendo and, and Atari and Sega. And, but we grew up, it was very common to play arcade games, to put a quarter into a machine and to be in that social atmosphere of being side by side, somebody playing a game, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Street Fighter, you would exactly. play people, you know, and it was like, it was like a, a real battle right there standing right next to each other. And oh, these, yeah. this generation of, of, of kids that are coming up now, they're very used to the online digital world, you know, it's being console. far away. Right. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, because see, back in the day when we grew up, you know, car arcades were so popular, right? They bring a Mortal Kombat 2 out in the arcade. And then months later... You're like, oh my god! Please bring it to the Super Nintendo, please. Right, right. <laughs> Let's get the Sega Genesis version, and you know all these different versions. Let's see which one's better, you know, and and stuff. That's what excited us, right? Yeah. Now they don't bring new arcades out unless if it's um, what's the famous brand that brings them out still uh, that does all the the new shit. I can't even think. That um, bring, wait, that brings what out? Raw, uh, raw thrills. Oh, raw Arcade thrills. Yeah, steel. they do. A, yeah. yeah, raw thrills does a lot. And then you see, um, Vulix is like a common thing in mm -hmm. modern arcades. So, uh, you'll see like you know a row of like four Vulix like back to back. So there's like eight of them total yeah. or whatever. And uh, they had those at the bowling alley. So those are like the sit down ones, you know, mm -hmm. there's no more. The only custom like super decked out looking ones are like the shooters, the racers and, and stuff like that, like the really big ones. And then the, the platformers or fighting games, they're all on yeah. Bulix and they even they still run. I didn't even know this, but there's this online system called Nessica. Um, mm. And they're still using that system in uh, the modern arcade setup, which is pretty crazy because uh, Capcom uses that system as well. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, does the do you know if Japan is still hardcore on arcades? I do. You know what? I don't know a lot about the the current uh, state of the Japanese. Yeah. Like arcade culture. Um, I, d I did kind of talk about the other day how I think that they had it right in the beginning mm -hmm. by having sit down arcades. Like it's kind of crazy when you think that Americans were making much bigger 
bulkier, more yeah. expensive arcade machines to stand there and play a game that you could take you 45 minutes to beat, you know, or longer. Um, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, because like it's not comfortable to stand there for that long. Like mm -hmm. even if you're a kid, it, it gets uncomfortable after a while. Um, and they ha that's one thing that they had right was <laughs> making it, you know, at a, at a where you can just sit down and play a game sitting next to somebody. But that's like Japanese culture for you. America's like, yeah, stand up and, you know. Well, I think Jap Japan had everything right. You know, everything they they do is unfortunately better. It, the right. quality is better than America. I mean, look at all the old consoles. It was j made in Japan, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean their their minimalism is very smart. Like it's it's yeah. it's it's smart for them to use minimalism, and it shows in like all of their architecture. But the you know arcades being the perfect example. Now don't get me wrong, it's the golden age of arcades in the U.S. was very cool because you got so many fancy looking arcade cabs out of it. You know. Uh, but then we get into the 90s where it's much more um, generic, so to speak. And yeah. uh, unless it was a racing cab or something, there was really no reason to have, you know, like the Burger Time one right here. Um, Japan. OK, let me catch up. Let's see. Big Reese says lots of arcades in Japan have shut down in the last three years. OK, so there you go. That's tells you that it's probably not thriving. You know, there's a channel that I'm subscribed to on YouTube called Retro um, Retro Moments. And if you guys, I'll pull it up here in a second. But if you guys ever have a chance, uh, you need to check this channel out because it's really cool. Um, but uh, chat, I love you guys, but I want to look at this thing real quick because I've had it pulled up for a second. But here's the Burger Time Quarter Arcade. And it looks, I mean, it looks like pretty much a perfect replica of the uh, full-scale <laughs> arcade you know since this is after hours well for me since it's 10 25 yeah I, I wonder if any dudes that's bought any one of these have tried to like play with any of these with their penis or anything like you know oh, use their penis as the hand or something <laughs> with the controller <laughs> i just thought of that on my twisted mind <laughs> oh my god that's why that's why we got him here, folks. Twisted Chris. Um Yeah, I don't I that's that's an interesting I you should we should create a poll or maybe you should yeah. create a poll. I feel like using the word poll now is like just awkward though. It's it's with Yeah, because men, we're stupid. <laughs> we try to do some weird shit, you know? We're like, hey, where can we stick this at? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, twisted joysticks. Okay, um, yeah. let's see the prototype, uh, one quarter scale arcade from at quarter arcades looks amazing. Uh, what's your take? Anything they need to fix or tweak? Uh, you know, and and that's a good question. Let's just pull up the original Burger Time arcade cabinet. Let's see. So here is a. Uh, Here's something. I don't know how accurate this is going to be, but it looks like the front is a little bit different. Coin doors. Oh, this might be, is this like a remake? Or is this it original? It might actually be an original cabinet, but they have the coin door looks with weird. 60 games, I think. Yeah, the coin door looks weird. It looks weird. Sorry, looks like a replica, me. though. I don't I don't buy it. Yeah. Oh, here. What? Let's see, Burger Time. Here we go. There, Vintage. That, that looks like the real one. Four grand. That Burger Time for 4200 That looks yeah. like a real one. Yeah. Okay. Bingo. Why is it so blurry? What? Why would anybody do that? Diabolical. Well, from what I can see, let's see. Let's go back to the uh, James Hayes Everything post. Um... All right, get a good look, Chris. We're going to we're going to transition here. All right, so the the Bally Midway little mm -hmm. marker right here, it looks like that's not there, but I mean, obviously yeah, it's a totally. photo. 
I, I, I'm sure that that's licensing, but I wonder if they'll be able to pull it off. Um, it looks like the graphics and everything else look pretty accurate. Oh, the top is black here on this one. On this one, it's orange. Mm. Interesting. I mean, it, it's pretty damn close, though. Like, it's pretty yeah. right on. Like, I wonder um, how much this one would go for. I mean, I, it's got to be like two ninety nine, right? It better not be four hundred like the Ninja Turtle crap. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, four hundos. That's steep for something so so tiny. But I see, New like. Wave toys. Theirs is cheaper. Like when you when they do the pre orders, it's usually like one sixty nine or something, right? But see, I want to say that these these uh, corner cade numbskull or whatever. Aren't they bigger than New Wave toys? Yeah, they're bigger. Because they, yeah. New Wave is one six; these are a quarter scale. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so they're they're bigger. Uh, well, hmm. so I mean, it makes sense that they're going to be a little bit more expensive. But the weird thing to think about, though, is that okay, you could pay two ninety nine for one of these, but then you could buy an arcade one up for you know two ninety nine, <laughs> three ninety nine. So it's like. But I guess, you know, you have the collector's item aspect of it. They're playable. They're a little bit bigger. I mean, they're to scale. They're accurate, et cetera, et cetera. Galaga Guy 88 says, my wife uh, at Burger Time Babe is psyched for this. This is her game. And JJ says, don't get it twisted around that joystick, Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, And then... Uh, Bobby says, I haven't seen many collections of quarter-cades, only the smaller ones. They're dasting. So let's see. Do you have any of these? No, I don't have any of these. The only ones no I have. No New Wave either? No, I have New Wave. New Wave. Okay. Yeah, New Wave likes to send me um, theirs for review, which is really cool because there's all the ones that they've sent me are, are like really cool ones that I nice. like. Um. Hold on, let me see if I can pull something up. Order. Uh, all right, let's try this. Here we go. Do 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 do. Oh, there's a whole. There's a whole thing here. Oh, here you go. All right, here here guys, I'm gonna transfer this link over. And we are going to check out the Reddit or so that's the new wave toys in between the quarter arcades. So that's, you know, one six scale and then the quarter scales, the Pepsi and the seven up. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. we've got. Wait, elevator action and oh, okay, that's like a maybe a review. What is this? Space Invaders software update tutorial. Oh, okay, but look, this guy's got like a legit setup going on here. I Hi there, I'm see. Jack from Quarter Arcade. Oh wow! Did you see that? You ain't kidding. That's some trippy shit right there. Right? With all those hands playing it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So get off off me bro all right so yeah that's that's cool though it looks cool polybius i've seen that one on amazon i think that was like numb skull that's funny but um so the one that uh new wave toys just released is a it's like an urban legend there's like urban legends surrounding it so berserk is the one that they just released mm -hmm. And it, it really came out. It was in the arcades, but there's like urban legends around it. You know, people died. Three people died playing that game. Uh, so it's kind of like Polybius, except for it actually exists. Polybius doesn't exist. Mm. Um, oh, here's one. Look at that. Jeez. I knew it. I knew people would do this. It's so cool, though. I mean, they make it where the ceiling and the walls. Man, people get nuts. Yeah. And look at even the lights. The lights. Chat, can you see this okay? I Dude, that is trippies. Uh, that is some trippy stuff. Oh wow, it's on a Yeah. 
They yeah. tripped me out on that. That's like some <laughs> Mr. Rogers magic right there. Wow. Yep. And to look, it looks like he's building another one. That's super cool. Yeah, that's killer. Right? See, that would be cool to have like a wall mounted shelf like that in your arcade oh, yeah. room. Like just just one really nice one like that wall mounted. That's really cool. Yeah, please don't give me any ideas. You don't give me ideas. I got too much shit. <laughs> I buy too much shit, you know. Oh, look, it's I'll sell one thing to buy ten more things. It's like really. Oh my gosh. Oh, Y Files is is freaking awesome. Um, let me see. Uh, JJ. Oh, got that one. I, uh, Messiah fall asleep. Did you see the mini pinball attachment for the Switch? Yes, I did see that. Arcade puppet show. Yeah. I thought it was a full-size room until you zoomed out. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Order Arcade's review. Oh, Rostalgia. All these guys are in here. Um, Mike B loaded up uh, TMNT. Come on, I want to see more cool rooms. Oh, look at this. Somebody's doing like an old-school filter. Oh, yeah, that's killer. That's cool, yeah. You know, I'm surprised none of these companies ever came out with like a Mortal Kombat one. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, that's a good, I don't know, man, like that, I feel like that licensing is really fickle, though, you know, they're like, we want a lot of money, because WB owns Mortal Kombat, right? They yeah, own Warner game. Brothers, God, they're, a, they're really a turd yeah. company. Oh, man. Um, Because, see, I did a video a year ago, and then updated the video a year back of this guy that had this, you know, little studio or whatever, and he was making Mortal Kombat Trilogy, a, a remake, but it was like HD. And I mean, oh my goodness, it, it looked amazing. It, it was, it was like, wow, you have to look it up on YouTube sometime. But anyways, um, Ed Boon, <clears throat> he was all for it. Mm-hmm. Warner Brothers said, nope, because they were afraid it was going to take sales away from their new Mortal Kombat. Look, you bring back a, a remake of the old Mortal Kombat, it'll outsell the new shit. Guarantee it. You know, because those those are the most famous Mortal Kombat games. Right. Like, I've played the new Mortal Kombat 1, you know, because after, uh, what was it? Mortal Kombat 11, and yeah, then they did they brought the one. Yeah. Right, they like reset it's it. All right. Yeah. I yeah, agree. the new the new fighting uh, uh, system they have for it. No. <laughs> I've, I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, yeah. That it was just kind of like meh, you know? They got it, yeah. and they were like, oh, well, it's violent, super super violent. See, I don't like like I'm not a huge a uh, fan of like violence doesn't make a game any more fun to me like it it can almost be disgusting to like this is just my personal mm. preference yeah. it can it can almost be disgusting to me like i've seen real life violence and so mm. when i see like super ultra realistic violence in games a lot of times i'm like eh. i'm kind of like turned off by it you know like there's there's a certain amount that i'm like like okay with um yeah but it's just I don't want to use the word triggering because I feel like that's such a, mm. it's such a, like, I don't know. Uh, well, what I mean, I, politically we all have words? our, we all have our triggers. It's just like if, you know, if I watch a movie and it has something to do, you know, with a kid uh, getting hurt or something, I'm ready to jump in the TV and kill them. <laughs> you know, because you know what I've been through. So, yeah, you know, that's a major yeah. trigger now. Yeah. Now, oh, yeah. The, the earlier 90s Mortal Kombat's, you know, like Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, right. Ultimate and all that crap. See, I, I, I love those. And yeah, the, the fatalities were cool and stuff because they were they were cartoons and they were they were more funny fatalities. You know, right. big head blows up these big at 50 
arms, you know, or right. you know, going on the ground. But now, like the new Mortal Kombat's, the fatalities are just. I mean, they uh, they're cringy as fuck. It, yeah, it's brutal. I mean, yeah. brutal. Like I, so yeah, I don't know. I'm weird like that. But yes, the first yeah. Mortal Kombat is probably my favorite one of all time. Um, I love Mortal Kombat 2 as well. Uh, yeah. And there's something about MK4, even though everybody hates it, that I think is cool because it was like the first 3D one. And I like the speed With of weapons. it. weapons. Yeah. And I like, yeah. I like the speed of it. Um, so it's, it's cool. But, you know, anything after 4 is where I kind mm. of lose interest. I think the last one that I bought was um, 11. And I, I got mm. I got it on sale for like fifteen bucks with like the ultimate package or whatever. Yeah. And um, you know, it's okay. It's it's fun to play, but it's just like the yeah, the brutal the the level of gore and graphicness, like slicing people's face off and, and seeing like all yeah, of that pretty, is like it's pretty brutal, yeah. Um Let's see. I'm with you, Jade. I don't mind violence in games, but sometimes it's over violent and doesn't add anything to the game. Yeah. Uh, entertain, entertaining stream tonight. This lady going to go. Thank you for joining us and have a good night. Um, Mensa says turn off after living the life we had. Yeah. Uh, any Anybody who's been exposed to like real life violence or. or see, that's why my. Um dad uh you know I, I lost my dad when i was six but before that you know he was in the military he was um mm. he was in the air force okay and now i know why he was a fucking alcoholic from hell because his job was to gather and bring all the the dead bodies back home Ugh. so after my mom told me that, you know, I was like, yeah, I probably have a drinking problem too. Cause that's all, that's all your job is, is seeing your, your dead friends and your dead soldiers and bringing them back home and have to deal with all that shit. That's some crazy shit. Right. I'll be honest with you. I give, I give a lot of respect to anybody that's in the military. Cause I'll tell you this, I couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta be a special person to be in the, type of military and shit i could do that shit you <laughs> you'd be surprised like um not to to go down the, the rabbit hole too much but a lot of times <clears throat> um i was thinking about this because i was thinking about the election and you know everybody all these guys are fighting for a space in the election right and trying to do things to get people to um basically aim their energy a certain way right like so like oh you know this person's doing this how could they do that like oh this person said this how could they do that like this is inhumane this this and that and and you hear like the crowds of people going oh boo oh this and i'm like but you know what a lot of times sometimes the best leaders are the people who don't want that leadership role but who have the experience mm. um and you put them in that role and then they, they take it on even though they don't want to. And, uh, and they, they do really, really well, even though it's, yeah. it's hard and you know, it's not what they wanted to do, but they do really, really, really well because they excel at that. But this one thing about, you know, election and politicians and all this stuff that I see is like how these guys manipulate large, large crowds of people to feel a certain way about something with the way that they talk to them. And I'm like, I'm just like, to me, it's, it's like, why are you, why are you giving this person like that energy? Like, why is there's no, they have these huge platforms to do this. No. It's just, it's crazy, man. And, and, but anyways, I was thinking about that and I'm like, people who have to fight for the presidency, it's like probably don't have, everybody's best interest you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah politics is a whole nother yeah level of bullshit <laughs> it is but yeah, yeah my dad my dad was in the military he was um 
he's he's still alive, but he's nice. actually uh within the, like two years ago he like paralyzed himself, and oh, really? he had a bunch cool. of health problems from being exposed to Agent Orange, and um he was an alcoholic when I was little, mm. and uh it was just I know like it was all Vietnam related you know and I like oh, he, wow. he was a grunt. And he was there for like 14 months or no, like 18 months straight or something, something insane. Yeah. And, um, he lost like a lot of friends and, and he was messed up. I mean, like we'd be driving down the road and you'd hear a car backfire and he'd like duck so hard. Oh yeah. Um, you know, he'd practically slam his head on the steering wheel and I was such a bitch when I was a kid because I would like laugh. I didn't get it. And I, mm. I mean, he yelled at me one time and he was like, it's not funny. And I like, I got that. It was like, I understood like then like, oh, this is like really traumatic and stressful for him. And I asked him, you know, as a kid, I was like, why, why do you react that way? And he was like, I don't want to talk about it. But when you see your friends, you know, when you get your friends body parts all over you, Cause they got blown up 10 feet away from you right in front of your face. It's it's you'll never be the same or something like that. And I just remember him saying he had his friend's body parts all over him. And I was like, Oh my God, dude, that is like really fucked up. Well, I mean, cause you gotta think, you know, 10 minutes before that, they could have had a conversation. Now they're fucking gone. Right. That's exactly. Some hardcore shit. Exactly. But when I went into the military, I really had, a lot of respect for that mindset mm. of understanding that I'm going to be working with people who have ex already experienced this similar trauma and then, you know, losing friends in Afghanistan and, um, and, uh, seeing friends lose like their body parts. Like I, I, I knew one guy, I wasn't, um, on deployment with him. Um, but he went to, school of infantry with me and he ended up he was like security forces which is like you yeah. don't really deploy if you're security forces you guard nukes but this is when they were deploying because they needed um what do they call combat um like combat replacements or something like that and anyways he, he ended up going out there and just he got his both his legs blown off his arm blown off and um you know so now he is permanently just fucked up in, in a wheel like lieutenant dan type shit you know without the happy yeah. ending um and so it, it it is war is brutal war is brutal yeah. and, and losing people um to that it makes you see everything differently it makes you see you know how these countries work and what these people are doing and it's just it's really fucked up um so yeah, yeah. i mean i guess th that that contributes to a lot of that um kind of like i just i'm i'm very i limit the amount of violence that i will expose myself to because and and like playing like all of duty um yeah i think advanced warfare was was one of the ones that i kind of thought was fun and the futuristic one because it's not as realistic it's more futuristic but um i mean even the storylines of like black ops i was like this is like way too it's like way too close to home, like just the way yeah. it felt when you're playing the game and stuff. Um, it me I'm sure Mensa can relate to a lot of the stuff I'm saying, and uh, but it's, yeah, it's different if you're in the military and you're not, you know. Like my favorite Call of Duty games was Black Ops, and Black Ops Two, you know. And you get in the game, you're ready to go get some. Yeah, but I haven't been in a real war, so you know what I mean. Well, so, there and the, the thing is, it's like everybody's different. Like I knew guys who came back from deployment, and you know they were they were playing Call of Duty and stuff. But then, you know, it it depended because there was like there was different like levels of deployments. Like some people would have like really fucked up deployments, and then some people would be like intermittent, where you kind of can recover from it or you know whatever. But um, like one of the last ones that they did in our regiment that was to Afghanistan was so bad. I lost, I, I lost three friends, um, in that, from that deployment alone. And 
no four actually four friends that I was like close to um and then you know other other people who I knew and stuff and it was just like dude but they had the way it was out there and I wasn't out there when it was like this this was like the worst but they had laid um daisy chain mines and they had IEDs like buried underground that they had used like wooden plates that they figured out how to use wooden plates with. And it was so bad that entire platoons would go on patrol and they would walk in a single file line, stepping in each other's footprints. Because literally, if you stepped outside of the person in front of you's footprints, you there was a chance that you were going to step on something that was going to blow half your platoon sky high or at least yourself. Wow. And then what would happen is, you know, cause the Afghanis would know where they were going to go um, from watching them every day. And so they would set up all these traps for them and they would take a certain route and then they would ambush them. So they'd get like, you know, it halfway into their patrol and they'd get him to like a choke point and then they just start firing like RPGs at him. So what does everybody do? You know, everybody has to move. Everybody starts moving. And then the next thing you know, there's like a daisy chain that you step on and then it's like, blah, and you know, everybody's legs that went that way, they're, oh you know, goodness. are halfway blown off. Um, it, it was just, oh my God, it was yeah. so crazy. Yeah, I bet. Uh, crazy crap. But yeah, not not to not to go dark here. <laughs> I'm going dark. Yeah. Now we're both Terminators. <laughs> blah, 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 it got blah. too bright in this game room. I guess because I've been up since like uh, 4 a.m. and it's like 10 p.m. No, almost Dude, 11 p.m. Now. I woke now. up at five this morning. I had a crazy ass dream about the eclipse. Oh really? Yeah. What what percentage do y'all get? Oh, it's like, it's like. I think maybe like 30 mm. but i my dream was not in california i was in a desert in another country mm. yeah it was it was it was very strange uh, See, i think that's what i think that's what my dad was in was the vietnam or because what year was that I can't remember what was the Vietnam. Um, or... It was it was late. Well, it was sixties. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. My dad was in that then. Mm. Um, JJ says, "Was that in Afghanistan?" Uh, no, no, I didn't go on that deployment. I did not go on that deployment. That was the last deployment that my regiment went on. And a bunch of my friends got, like, went over there as combat, like, volunteered to go over there as combat replacements. And um, uh, I was, I already had orders out of, out of there. I had already done two deployments by then. Let's see, what does it say? The Switch Virtue Eraser M2 port is so good. I didn't know they did. Like, is it like a standalone game? Interesting. Yeah, war ended in 75. But it was like, I think after 70, like 73 or 72, it was, it, it had kind of died down a lot mm. from where it was like. Uh, after Afghanistan, I never played an FPS again. Closest I got was Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. Cyberpunk is because it's not it's not realistic. I mean, like to our yeah. to our time. So, Greg, thanks for your service. But yeah, I mean, it it's just it changes you. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, we had people who came back, which which was crazy to me, like who came back from Iraq and um, they had like a really bad deployment in Iraq when I first got there. Cause I think it was right after Fallujah um, or no, no, not Fallujah. God, what was it? Uh, 
I can't I can't remember. It wasn't Fallujah. Maybe it was Fallujah. Dude, it's all blending together now. But um <laughs> But anyways, they had just gotten back and it was like the the Xbox what was it? Xbox 3 no, 360. Yeah. Was out and they were playing I think like one of the Call of Duties or something. And I'm just getting to the battalion and these guys are like it was it was crazy. Anyways, mm. I'm going to stop talking about the military. <laughs> well, but, uh, what, what system did you tell me that um, on the PlayStation side that was out and you didn't get to oh, check PS3. it out? Oh, PS3. Yeah, PS3. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so Xbox 360 was out and I think you know, PS3 came out roughly around the same time, right? Yeah. And I think I had gotten like a 360 right before we were deploying. I never really had enough time to play it though. Cause we were doing like a workup the whole time. Um, but I did, I, I mean, I played it a little bit and I think I had like need for speed and, uh, something else, but yeah, I never got a PS three and I just, after the 360, I wasn't, I just wasn't playing games cause we were, you know, constantly deploying or I had like yeah. a, a billet that was like insanely keeping me insanely busy. Um, but yeah, Greg, Greg, what branch were you in? Um, of the military. Well, we are, uh, holy, we're, we're hitting the two hour mark already, dude. Cool. <laughs> <clears throat> So, anything else you're going to buy? Anything you're interested in? You're going to buy the Numbskull Burger Tame? No. <laughs> For five ninety nine. dollars I think those things are cool. Um, Army, okay, yeah. right on. Uh, I think those things are cool. I had a friend, well, I've had a ton of friends who were in the, in the Army, but I had an MP and then a comm guy. Um, and the MP, he was in, like, early Afghanistan, like, when we were up in the mountains. But anyways, yeah, so I I don't have anything that I want to buy really right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, like, super interested in anything. Um, I have a huge backlog of games. I'm still thinking about doing, like, backlog live streams. Uh, mm. But it's, like, I also have a list of videos that I want to get done. And yeah. I have, I'm going to try and put out the one for Berserk on Sunday. And then uh, I have, let's see, I have six other videos that are lined up um, after nice. that, that I want to get done, you know. So that's basically like my lineup for the next couple months. And I'm trying to release videos every two to three weeks because I notice when I release videos that way on either a Sunday or a Wednesday, that they do well better yeah. yeah um so instead of getting like three thousand views um i get you know like closer to eight thousand or something in the first 24 hours mm. um and that's yeah. good because you want you know you want your content to get pushed out there um you want people to see it you want you want to share it with people that's my thing like because i do stuff mm -hmm. that i think is fun or i want to do and i mean that's one of the main reasons why I make YouTube content. I want to share it with people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, YouTube never gets gets my uh, channel. <laughs> the algorithm, I jack it up all the time. So I got jacked it up today because I, I posted a video. Well, I had one scheduled, right? I, I scheduled it last night, but it was going to pop up today. And I thought I scheduled it for 4 p.m., right? <laughs> So, and then I had another one lined up and I was going to, you know, schedule it for 12 p.m. Well, not knowing the one I did before for 4 p.m., I had it scheduled to, for 12 p.m. So as I'm trying to get this other one out, I'm clicking the share and it's like, why is it not, you know, scheduling for 12 p.m.? Well, duh, there's already one scheduled. So then when oh, it yeah. finally worked. Two fucking of my videos popped up at noon, right? And it jacked up everything. 
Yeah. The first video, it was like, yeah, it got, you know, it was going like it was supposed to, which my, none of my videos, honestly, doesn't break high shit anymore because I just don't give a shit. <laughs> but anyways, the second one I posted in five hours, right? You know how many views it got? Ten. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it messed up the whole thing because what I did when I realized that I posted both of them at the same damn time, I was like, oh, shit. So I went back and unlisted the second video, and then I rescheduled at 4 p.m., like I said. Then when the video actually popped up, it showed that the video was basically uh, up for already four or five hours when it really wasn't. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. in that first time it's popped up, if your video doesn't get video uh, views like it's supposed to, it's it's already a dead video. It's not going nowhere. Yeah. It, so the the thing that sucks too is I've I've done that before too, or I've set it for like four a.m. instead of p.m. thinking I set it for p.m. Yeah. Um, but once you and if you try to re-upload it, it, it won't do as good because YouTube recognizes like the, the video or the thumbnail or something. Um, so yeah, it sucks because you, you have to release it at a good time and on the right day. And it could be different for, for different channels, but like for me, mm -hmm. I know Sunday and Wednesday are the days that if I release a video around three o'clock on mm. a Sunday or a Wednesday, the video will generally do well um yeah. but also there has to be the space between when i release videos yeah. um which is fine because i'm not one of those content creators who's doing like you know three videos a week or something like that uh of the same content yeah yeah i mean well you have these guys like uh eta prime maybe but uh, mad little pixel and mm -hmm. they they're doing, they're constantly doing stuff. Like they have content to release, but they make like really quick videos where they're talking about whatever they're doing, you know, like, um, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, mad little pixel always gets like the emulation drives and stuff. Right. And so yeah. he'll, he'll just make a video about it and talk about it and, and run through it. And then he releases the video and then, you know, three days later he gets, cause they just get stuff sent to him just constantly. Oh so, yeah. So they have it's like, easier that way. Yeah. And, um, so, I mean, I'm assuming like that's their primary focus is that they're just, you know, doing content constantly. And, um, as cool as that is, cause I mean, they probably make mad guap doing it. Um, that's, yeah. It's almost like stressful, like to think about having to do that much content. Well, and you know, I'm sure that their full time job is YouTube, too. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you don't have no normal job when you're pushing that kind of content out. Right. I mean, unless if you're just nuts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If you have like five or six videos already scheduled weeks out, you know, already edited and everything, but I mean, that's just like the What's that guy that, jeez, he think I post so many damn videos. RGT. Oh, RGT85. Yeah. Jesus. I'm subscribed to him. And, I mean, he just, just rolls them out, you know? It's like. Yeah. He's, he's got much. like, um, he's does like a lot of opinion, like conversation pieces. Um, yeah. he's pretty good though. Like he talks, he speaks very well on things, mm -hmm. I guess. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's another one who is, you know, releases many videos in a week and I mean, yeah. he's got a huge subscriber base. So it makes, it makes sense. Cause when you get that oh, yeah. big, the algorithm's just like automatically pushing your stuff out. Um, oh, yeah. and it's, it's funny because for me, um, I pull in revenue through super chats when I go live, but you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm probably live about once or twice a month until I yeah. start really streaming. Um, and then, and then my videos actually pull in revenue. So I'm a small mm -hmm. channel, 
but because my average view count is between, you know, let's just say like three to, to 8,000 or something like that, mm -hmm. um, I just average out to like five, five a piece. Um, you know, I, I average a month between 100 to 250 on like a really good month. But I mean, every month I somehow manage to get paid by Google, um, mm. which is cool, you know, for being a very small channel. Um, but all that pretty much goes like right back into the channel. See, I, I think my channel uh, makes money here and there off of my old shit, mm. not my new shit. Like, you know, like a lot of my subscribers that are subscribed to my channel don't watch my stuff no more uh, because I can look in the, the deals and all my views and stuff are, are new people that ain't even subscribed. Um, I don't oh, know. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah, I get a lot yeah. of that too. Uh, um, I would say about thirty percent of my subscribers watch my stuff, mm -hmm. and then like it's like seventy percent is is not subscribed, which is really bizarre um, yeah. metrics. It's really strange. But my channel is just like spaghetti. It's like everywhere. You know, like one week I'm talking about an arcade, and the other week. Talking about a, a casino room, right? And then another week, I'm fucking dancing or something stupid, right? And then another week, we got a PS3 kiosk. And then today, then we're, I did a uh, uh, a jailbroken PlayStation 3. And that's the video I took down because it was trash or whatever. And YouTube just don't don't know who the fuck I am anymore. <laughs> Are you doing, you know, um, like, are you releasing on the same day? Um, have you tried that yet? Like releasing on the same day every week or only certain days? Um, nope, not on the same days. I mean, try this. Shit, it ain't the try same it. times. It ain't jack nothing anymore. Try, try releasing on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Try that. And, and just see what happens. Um, Wednesday and see, at 3 p.m. Yeah, just, just see what it does. See what happens. Um, and then um, I think the other big thing is try and make your thumbnails like Mr. Beast's thumbnails. However, mm. like just look at the style of his thumbnails and just try and copy that style, if that makes sense. Mm. Um because the algorithm likes those kind of thumbnails like that's that's what i did with my last uh thumbnail and mm -hmm. i mean it was it was one of my best like in immediate views in the first really? 24 hours yeah it had like in the first 24 hours it had like i want to say close to seven thousand or something um you know it slows down mm -hmm. afterwards but uh I feel like YouTube throttles smaller channels anyways. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. They whoa. do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because I got like 130-something subscribers from that video. So I feel mm. like they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, no, 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 no. No. Um, but anyways, my point is try doing that. Try on a Wednesday because yeah. my videos always do the best on Wednesdays for some reason. Um, hmm. Try on a Wednesday, 3 p.m., and then try and make your thumbnail like Mr. Beast, and um, see what happens. If you need, I mean, if you need any yeah. any help with thumbnails or anything, hit me up, and I I can try and help you out. See, Mr. Beast, you know, he knows YouTube better than YouTube does. Right. I mean, wow. He does like, dude. I look at his. Um, I look at a couple of his videos and he's like subscribe or i'll steal your dog and i'm like that's, i'm like that's fucked up man like that's like you know it's co it's coerced coercion have for like kids because they see that and they're like oh my god is he really gonna steal my dog have you actually watched through some of his videos they are insane shit 
And you know, none of his videos he ever does is clickbait. What's on that thumbnail? They right. are really doing it, yeah. which is nuts. Yeah. That's the same as, uh, uh, have you ever heard of Whistle and Diesel? Um, no. Oh, my God. You got to look up this nut. You think Mr. Beast is crazy. This guy's crazier. This guy will destroy brand new fucking Ferraris. Yeah, okay. He'll buy the shit and... Yeah. <laughs> That's mean, the type of stuff yeah. that is just... It's bonkers, dude. It's like, bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I mean, that's very true. His thumbnails are always like, you know, it's leading to something epic. It's co- going to cost yeah. a lot of money. And that that really draws people. And so in the gaming community, I think, you know, it's a lot different because it's like, well, what what is so enticing about what we're doing? And so it's a very, the gaming community in general is a very niche community, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that that's why it's always good to like if you're doing anything with gaming like you're you're doing the right thing for your channel because that's basically what your channel is about gaming uh it doesn't matter what it is you know if it's modding an arcade one up Mm -hmm. buying an arcade one up and talking about it or if it's you know a playstation 3 kiosk or a ps5 stuff or whatever it is it 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 just doesn't matter emulation whatever um but it's it's it comes down to um, a lot of the, obviously your video editing is going to matter, but the thumbnail and the release time and the consistency, like that's where YouTube starts to kind of like recognize your channels. Like, okay, I know this channel is, is going to probably release a video around this time. It seems like a normal thing. Mm-hmm. The algorithm's kind of like this crazy beast in its own, so to speak. Um, yeah. Must be a rich person hobby. <laughs> I hate, yeah, I hate, I hate watching videos where people break good stuff. I kind of feel the same way. I'm like, I'm like, why are you doing that, man? Like, cause I think about, I don't like, I don't want to go down a dark rabbit hole again, but I think about kids and people that I've seen in other countries and stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's like kind of <laughs> fucked up, man. I mean, I, yeah. get, I get it, but it's like, you know, and then it kind of like, you feel like it's, it's like putting this mindset into like youth in america that like it's cool to like get expensive shit and just destroy and it smash the shit. famous on youtube yeah well people you know it's just like it's just like drama people right. love destruction mm. if you had if there was like you know a building let's just say yeah. it's vacant or whatever and they don't you know, care who's on the winning side exactly but no. somebody gave you a button okay that said yes or no and you if you press the yes, you get to see this cool skyscraper blow the fuck up, right? Or no, we're just going to leave it there. What are you going to fucking do? Push the yes button because you want to boom. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People like shit. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Crazy world yeah. out there that we're, we're living in. Um, I mean, when I, when I smashed my arcade one up to pieces, my, uh, Pac-Man uh, arcade one up. I don't know if you ever seen that video. I did it a couple of years ago. People lost their freaking minds in the comments. Really? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Over a one I mean, up. Yeah, but I I, I I beat the shit out of it, and each time I'd, I'd I'd hit it real hard, the Killer Instinct announcer came in and said, you know, super combo on, <laughs> or. You know, different things. That's what it was about. And um, I got to see this now. I probably had the all time uh, negative <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Dude, we're, we're about to read these comments. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was bad. Should be under my arcade one up playlist. Uh, OK, let me see. I'll just go here. The, OK, playlist. Where is Arcade One Up? <laughs> arcade Games. Hold on, standby. Where? Oh, there it is. Oh, you found it already. Damn, um. You beat me. <laughs> well, I I got your Arcade One Up playlist. So what? What's the oh. title of it? Arcade One Up. One Up. Pac Man. Uh, uh. Destroyed. Okay, One Up. 
Let's see. About to see some destruction here. I'll take, you know, destroying an arcade one up is, is pretty. Yeah, see, I already found it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think I, at the time. Wait, what's, I had the, beef. what's the title of it, though? I'll just put it in your. Uh, in the. Oh, okay. There we are. No, I think at that time when me and John D, this was when he first started and we had some kind of, you know, beef or whatever. Uh, okay. In the video, I'm even talking shit about him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm goodness. sure he won't take it personally anymore. No, Where? then we became friends later. Dude, what the hell? Why can't I? Oh, it's not coming up in my. Did you put it in the chat? Oh, yeah. Am I supposed to put it somewhere else? No. <laughs> no, it just it should pop up in here and I can approve it, but I don't see it in there. Wait, hold on. Fan funding? Chats. What is this? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Live chat. Um, I don't throw it in there one more time, please. Okay. Paste. Are you seeing it? Yeah. <sighs> Lay sigh. Okay. What is the title of it? Just tell me. Okay, the just uh Arcade one up destroyed. Special guest KI announcer. You can just put it on the YouTube search and it'll pull it up. 2,100 views. <laughs> 157 comments. I forgot how many dislikes this bitch got. Okay. Here we go. Got it. <laughs> uh, let me do a little bit of audio test here. Um, wait, where did, where did it go? Let's see. All right. Boom. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. Hold on. What is, where is the, oh, theater mode. There we go. Okay, uh, chat, let me know if you are getting the audio. Chris, you probably won't get the audio for this, but chat, let me know if you so are. I need to make some room for the game room. Did we get, you guys getting audio? Just throw one in there if you're getting audio. I only need one one. I need to make some room for the game room. <laughs> Did you see a uh, Retro Lizard's Guitar Hero? he just made uh -uh. oh it's pretty cool it looks just like the arcade okay good here we go okay here we go here we go chat 20. for other cabinets <laughs> Oh yeah, I used to have the fucking Friday episode, you know, that did crazy shit. <laughs> Welcome to F It Friday Part 2, Twisted Gaming TV. You never saw this, huh? That's funny. Sorry. I want to see this. What does it say? Thank you. For <laughs> watching. Please subscribe. Yeah, that's when I did my old videos. I don't put that shit to the end now because I don't care. <laughs> don't ever forget your safety glasses. <laughs> this one, first one is the weeder test. Oh, man, it's too much. The weeder test. <laughs> Right in the face. <laughs> the weeder test has failed. Yeah, I think I, it's when I got this cab. The next the test Black Friday is sales. the drill test. Oh, really? I would have done this if I, got it, if I bought it for $500. Yeah, I don't know. Is that wind? 
Okay. Probably. Yeah, this Still video working. pissed a lot of people off. Pretty good. Oh, we're gonna get to the comments. Jeep test, drill test, leader test. Still working. Starting to get wild in a second, though. <laughs> the next test is the sledgehammer test. Whoever said these things are are, are junk and you know are are super flimsy. I don't know. This video is kind of. Oh, I'm pretty sure that would that would destroy any air. You hear the sound though? <laughs> the wow. announcer. I smashed that, and look, it's still working. Must have pushed the play button. T that button. Yeah, I like Daniel the announcer. Spells. The sledgehammer yeah. does not fail. Let's take a look. Whoopsie. Little panel fell off, man. There's a J. Remember how long ago this was. See inside, that's pretty cool. Wow. Dude, that awesome. went right through there. Oh my the god. Start button no more, because the button smashed. Huh. Pretty neat, though. Pretty neat. Pretty neat though. That's such a boy Dude, thing to say. Night. Look at that. Damn. Yeah. Can't start it now because smash the the button in. So. Yeah, I can't believe I did this video. Should four we carry years on? Ago. I'm gonna go wow. out of the Jeep and out of the That's crazy. Uh, power tool and the pickaxe and sledgehammer and the weeder. I'm gonna go with the sledgehammer. Yeah. All right. Get another good whack, Keith. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh man, it went the screen. Good night. That was pretty good. Did, did it like crack the glass? Wow, that's cool. I can't oh. remember. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's where it bleeded. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's done. So I don't think the screen's gonna work anymore. I don't think you can fix that anymore. <laughs> you know? I don't know. The best shot's coming up, though. Anymore. I'm surprised, though. <clears throat> Power hasn't been out on it yet. Might be great, man. Here. I don't know how it's still being powered up. It's wild. Ooh. There it goes. It's giving a good net whack, huh? Yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> There's one oh, shot. It just, it's so good. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's like it's a side. Whoa. It's crazy, man. Wow. Really wild. Are you taking it easy? Savoring it? Crazy. Honestly, no. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Go hold in there, huh? Oh, yeah. I see what you're doing. You're just oh, 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 stronger than people thought. <laughs> you don't think these are made? Oh, the best one are. is. Oh, 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 Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah. That top was pretty what wild. The rock yeah. like, damn, that. dude. Thank you for watching Twisted Gaming TV. Oh, yeah, this is it right here. This is the money the shot. Yes. Bam! <laughs> Slow motion. Bam! Monster <laughs> combo! Good night. That thing's still plugged up, but it ain't working no more. Yeah, that thing needs a little fixing, don't you think? Awesome oh, combo! A little fixing. Well, that's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> that funny? That's funny. That's just funny. Dude, this literally makes me want to buy an arcade one up <laughs> just to make a, a destroying an arcade one up video now. Oh, it's fun. Like that's what I'm saying. People love destruction shit. Not not out of not out of hate or anything, just out of pure fun. Because they're they're small, you oh, yeah. know, and you can just you uh, like that would be fun. Um, we'll I ha I have to see the 157 comments. Yeah. Dude, I laughed my ass off. Man, I would have taken it. Oh, there's a sad one. <laughs> <laughs> Just... 
Thank God this video has so much dislikes. Oh, wow. Why did you choose Pac-Man? <laughs> Could have donated, jackass. Wow. Yeah. Made me feel better should the... Uh, made me feel better about the durability of my MK2 cabinet. Yeah, I've, I've like, yeah, well, I mean, that did, that thing can definitely take a beating. I figured yeah. that you destroyed this one so that you could go out and get the new Pac Man with the light up marquee and, and the extra <laughs> game. Are you thinking about getting one of that? Yeah, see, that's a playful comment. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, funny. yeah. <laughs> um, man, looks like you had fun. Uh, let's see. Well, damn, Chris, but why do I suddenly feel scared now? LOL. Let me see. Too many people crying here. The guy isn't committing murder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. You got some cool shit, but your content and your personality. Oh, unsubscribed. Wow. Yeah. I love it when people mm -hmm. do that. Unsubscribed. I know. I want to unsubscribe to your channel. Go do it. <laughs> it's like they have to make it known. Like, ugh. Yeah. Uh, absolutely awesome video. Good job. I dig your channel uh, and love the setup. This this is the problem when self entitled pricks like these get given things for free because of their e begging. Wow. Yeah, and, and see the crazy thing is, I never got anything for free from RK One Up but the KI. Uh -huh. This was before the KI. Uh huh. Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, you know how people are. It's like you even touch oh, yeah. an arcade one up. There was like a, a time period where if you even touched an arcade one up. Yeah, you would literally you were a shill automatically. Mm. Like if you talk about arcade one up, if you touched them, there was a time period where it was, you were just automatically a shill. Oh yeah. Um, oops. What? Why did it do that? Okay, there it is. Let's see if there's a couple more good ones in here. That one is like that. This is like a you know I'm trying to elicit an emotional reaction out of you. Yeah. Um, these are like the funny. When I see comments like this, I just totally ignore them. <clears throat> yeah. Um let me see. Please do more of this just to make people mad. <laughs> uh that gets expensive after a while. See, Dude. I got I got the Pac-Man one though. Black Friday, I want to say that one was probably 149. Mhm. Mm when I got that. So, I mean, it's worth destroying that. Yeah. Oh, see, this guy's got to bring kids into it. Stupid, stupid waste of time and money. I'm sure a kid would have loved to have that, and instead you just destroy it. Yeah. Why people got to get so personal about it, though? Yeah. Um, What a waste and just stupid. But you know what's hilarious? The people that you know are complaining about this cheap machine getting destroyed – why are you not complaining about people that make movies and blow up fucking cars and shit? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Those ain't worth nothing. Oh, I guarantee you that there's probably hella comments on those videos like that. Yeah. Dude, that poor Pac-Man machine. That poor Pac-Man machine. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, the poor machine. That's 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 pretty uh Pretty classic. That yeah, four years ago, that was like pretty much when they were. Yeah, see, that's that's when the building was barely getting done. Cause see, this room right here you're seeing on the picture, that's the casino room now. Oh, okay. So yeah, so it looks a lot different. That's the stairs going up to the game room or whatever. Yeah. But there was one arcade one up. It was last year. MacGyver can put that back together. Yeah. <laughs> Break or stuff the year like before. Biscuit. You know, because around the holidays, they always have the arcade one-ups on sale for $199. Right. There was one arcade yeah. machine that I was going to buy just to destroy another one, but I forgot what it was. Hmm. I don't know. If they if they, if they go on sale this Black, Black Friday or whatever, you know, for a good price, I'll buy a couple and, you know. Maybe hook it to the Jeep or whatever and drive down the fucking road while, you know, it's just shredding to pieces. That'd be pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, if you get one of those uh, 199er deals or something. Or oh, off, yeah, dude, go perfect. on off. I bet I bet you they're on offer up in your area for super cheap. 
not out here, dude. Out here, people are like, um, you know, oh, I got this MK2 shark fin that has a Raspberry Pi in it. I'm selling it for $800. I'm like, are you... An arcade one-up. Yeah, I'm like, are you smoking crack right now to think that you can sell an arcade one-up for $800? Shark fin arcade one-up for $800 especially. That's a lot of money. I think we're all losing our minds with some of the stuff, like the prices, like, you know, back in the day, well, not back in the day, a couple of years ago when the arcade one up was thriving and stuff, and, you know, we were all nuts, and we were like, Ooh, look at this one, you know, we're going to buy this for 500 because at one time I had, I think the most I ever had on arcade one-ups was like maybe seven mm. at one time. I didn't get nuts like some people that have 20 or 40 of them. But you also had like real arcades at that same time taking up space. Oh, right? yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you when you're when you get excited and stuff, you're know, like 500 and yeah, no big deal and buy them. But like now, though, looking back on that, I wouldn't have paid the money for those machines now, you know even when they were five, mm -hmm. just because I'd rather spend that on, you know, something else, especially after getting the Miss Pac-Man for real cheap, you know, the original one. Yeah. I mean, a lot, and, and, and a lot of it comes down to personal preference too. Like, I mean, it's just not, yeah. it's not fitting for your setup, you know, like I think, yeah. um, for, uh, I kind of talked about this on Michael B's show, but just, it kind of pulled a lot of us into the, to the coin ops hobby. Um, yeah. and you know, for me, I'm very hybridized. Like I have, I have basically one multi-cade and then all the one ups that I have are either eighties or like super iconic 90, the nineties ones. So, but they're yeah. small and they're easy to move. And that's my other thing. The reason why I keep them around because they're small, they're easy to move. And you know, my game room has enough space in it. Like if I had a basement though, I think I would keep more coin ops. Um, yeah. But the fact that I'm kind of short on storage right now, I have Donkey Kong and then I have my Neo Geo and my um, Blastroids cab. And, yeah. oh, and I have an empty cruising cab that I'm, I might turn into like a racing, a multi-racing cab, but nice. I mean, the point is for me, it's like it just doesn't work or make sense to have a ton of coin ops. Um, of course, because yeah. I don't, I don't have like all that extra space. Um, but if I had a basement, though, I feel like I would be more inclined to to mess around with them. Yeah, but it it's different for everybody. Like, oh man, I have a I have a love hate relationship with arcade one up mm. the love is that I, I i really do like them i don't like the price anymore but i i do like for what they are now taking mine my game room don't like them so that's the battle you put a couple of arcade one-ups in here makes a whole authentic room look like shit you know what I mean? Yeah. I, think, I just have a different setup. Like, if you had, like, um, like, and I've seen this before, like, in, in hybridized setups where somebody has mostly coin ops, but then yeah. they have, like, maybe two or three arcade one-ups, they kind of use them as accent pieces throughout the game room. But they're, like, iconic ones, like Tron, for example. Mm. You yeah. know, Tron is very iconic. They did a really good job just on the overall presentation of that cab and it's just that's kind of the whole point of it is like the nostalgia yeah. of it for me i was a huge fan of that so like that that's a good example of one um that you could do is kind of like an accent piece and and there's a few that i think you could fit them in as accent pieces but you know and i agree with this argument like i'm not going to pay more than uh you know at most at most uh 399 for one of these things so, that's the cutoff 
Yeah, that's that's no. the cutoff. A thousand percent. But seeing that they go on sale for two ninety nine <laughs> and that's like a common thing, it's like I just wait. I'd rather just wait, you know, because two ninety nine is not bad for an arcade one up. Um JJ says it's getting late here. Long week, so I'll catch you later. Thanks for hanging out, JJ. Chris, good luck uh, seeing the eclipse. Jade, I'll watch the rest on the replay. Have a good weekend. You too. Um, we're getting close to wrapping up. So uh, We're only qu quitting the stream because she wants to. It's not my decision, or we'll be, be here for about, I don't know, two or three more hours. <clears throat> um, that's, a long, <laughs> that's a long stream. I've done them. 12, 15 hour streams before. Your PlayStation days? Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. Um, now, the Ridge Racer arcade went up. See, I, I bought that one when it went on sale on Black Friday, mm -hmm. and it was on sale for two ninety nine. No brainer. Great price. Because, I mean, how much was that when it first came out? Six ninety nine. Yeah, six ninety nine. That and the T2 both went on sale for two ninety nine, And that that's... That's a good oh. price for those. Yeah, and and, and see, it, it's funny because every time one of those came out, and it was you know, six ninety nine or five ninety nine, nineteen K Fox, would buy them full price, and I'm like, holy shit! Like the T two, you know, what was that six ninety nine for that? Yeah, I think that and Ridge Racer were six ninety nine. Yeah, I did. Special... I did a review. I initially bought Ridge Racer for six ninety nine. And then, uh -huh. but I bought it from Walmart, and this is what I learned: is you always buy your arcade one ups from Walmart because they have a yeah. ninety day return policy. And so it went on sale probably a month after I bought it. But guess what I did? I clicked the return button on Walmart, purchased the sale price one, and then when it got here, returned that to Walmart. <clears throat> Smart. But I mean, you know what I mean. So it's like. Yeah. Um, if you, cause if you use a firm and that's what I do, I use a firm when I was purchasing those ones. Cause it's like, mm. if I don't like it, I can return it. And then it's like very small, tiny, tiny monthly payments. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would, that's how I would fight that whole sale aspect of them that's smart going on sale. I didn't think of that, but see the, the whole point is, is. When somebody buys one of these cabs for six ninety nine, and then a month later two ninety nine, that's four hundred dollars off. Yeah, you just gave the middle finger to the people that bought it. I mean, that's just shitty. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. You know, if if they have some um, good cabs for Black Friday on sale, I'm gonna buy them. And then when that shit goes back up to price, let's sell my marketplace. <laughs> Just flip yeah. the shit. Yeah. I mean, it's terrible. It's yeah. I mean, it is that that is annoying. It is annoying um, when it's that much, you know. Um, I think like so the Street Fighter HS5 one <clears throat> was on sale for four ninety, no three ninety nine when it first came out, and mm -hmm. the normal price for these newer ones is like four ninety nine. Um, but for a regular, like standard cab, that's still too much. Like they should be three ninety nine. And if they were going on sale for two ninety nine, there's like no reason why um they should be marked yeah. up to four ninety nine, you know? But I think I they could sell a lot more if they keep it at a oh yeah. A certain price. Yeah. Um, you know, either that or they dip down cyclically cyclically because then people will be waiting they'll know like okay next month is the you know whatever every two month arcade one up sale um yeah but it's like you've really got to be on the on the lookout for for the good prices because it will happen uh i think mm -hmm. that there's certain licenses that it won't happen with like i've never seen marvel versus capcom 2 go on sale yeah um, I've seen, I, I think on Walmart, one of the vendors is selling it for like five fifty, but that's only mm -hmm. $50 off what the original price was. Like it has not dropped or gone on sale. And that was one of the ones that I knew wouldn't because I, I felt like because of the licensing, um, yeah. and you know, there's a couple that are, that I, I think were kind of like that, like raw thrills ones. 
Um, mm. But outside of that, like their standard stuff has all gone on sale. Tron was on sale for a while. I mean, every all the ones that are like more expensive and even Dragon's Lair, which was originally supposed to be an <clears throat> arcade one up exclusive. And I think it was like five ninety nine. Um, has gone down to like four ninety nine or something, so it's wow. Like, yeah. See what I was told though that Arcade One Up doesn't make those sale prices. Right. It's actually Walmart or whatever retailers that decide to do that. Right. Because they buy the stock from Arcade One Up and they can sell it for whatever damn price they want once they buy it. You know. But for and, their direct to consumer model though, they will put things on sale. You know, uh, for example, the um, Attack on Mars is they have direct to consumer and that's on sale right now for four ninety nine or something. So they will do sales that match what the retailers are doing. You know, um, so it's not it it's not entirely true because then those ones they are yeah. in charge of the the pricing, right? Mm. Yeah. It's just a crazy business. It gives me a headache. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about all that mess, you know? Yeah. I agree. I, I just think, you know, if like I'm not I'm the likelihood of me buying another arcade one up is so low. It's so tiny unless like somebody wanted me to customize one for them or something, mm. you know, because um, I do that. Like I, I would I, I've been wanting to do a service where I like customize certain only certain arcade one ups um, and arcades like arcade restoration. And that would yeah. be like the only other time that I would be dealing with it is, you know, like buy it, fix it up, buy it for super cheap, fix it up and then, you know, sell it, resell it. Um, but it's just like they don't really have anything like they don't really have anything like all the ones that I wanted were all the 80s ones and then like the Street Fighter ones. So, yeah, I think they should have stuck with the older stuff because when they first started the company you know one of the first cabs was rampage mm -hmm. and that was amazing that was amazing one when, when it first came out i was like man this is really cool and then i want to say i got the street fighter because i forgot what first cabs it was i think it was the rampage street fighter and something else Maybe it was the Pac-Man at the very first. I can't remember. But I had all three of them anyways, whatever released. But I, it was a neat deal, two ninety nine. That was a pretty neat price for that. I got excited. And uh, then, you know, they just got a yeah. little greedy. Well, <laughs> the, the other big thing that was enticing was the fact that they started following the form factor of, Mm -hmm. the original ones so i mean tron dragon's lair star wars and um like the cocktail tables were you know prime ones and big blue um was close minus the control panel the control panel was trash um, yeah but you have 99 lives so if you got one you know if you get those for super cheap then there's really awesome because you can just throw the 99 lives control panel on there and, and do a little bit of work on it. But um, I think that was a big thing for me was being able to have <clears throat> certain ones that actually followed the, the form factor because the generic look of the shark fin ones was like, I, I don't want to pay yeah. 200 bucks, even a hundred bucks for one of these and pay another 400 bucks to mod it out. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm like in the screen for crash. So the, yeah. the only, I think the, the only cool shark fin one that they made, um, I think was Marvel versus Capcom because of the artwork. Mm. That, that's what made it cool was the artwork yeah. was just really awesome on it. Um, and, and a lot of times like, you know, they end up being, that's, that's all they end up being is like a, you know a pretty little accent piece like a collector a little mini collector's piece so to speak um with a lot of those older shark fin ones i feel like now did they sell out of that marvel versus capcom 2 one not the 97 one but the um the the original one yeah they sold out of it 
like oh, okay. like Marvel versus Capcom, they sold out of. But MVC two, um, they never they they ended up restocking it or producing more or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then now they're doing the X Men ninety seven variant of it. So it's just, I mean it's the same thing. It's just yeah. got the deluxe and the skin on it. But yeah, I had the limited edition uh, Marvel versus Su- Marvel. Superheroes? Superheroes version where it had the plate on the back with the yeah and the Sanwa number. yeah that yeah. was another cool one that's like a cool little accent piece you know because it was limited yeah. edition yeah. um but I thought that 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 one yeah I forgot about that one but that one and probably because I'm a huge Capcom fighting game fan but that one in the Marvel versus Capcom mm-hmm. um were just the artwork was amazing um and they were just really cool looking little pieces. Like, I mean, yeah. obviously you, you don't take it seriously. You don't look at that and go like, oh my God, it's an arcade. You're like, this is cool. It's like a little mini arcade that you can actually play. But like, look at all the artwork. It's got, you know, really vibrant colors, cool artwork, yeah. original. So that that was, I think, what I kind of appreciated about those ones. Um, and then the ones that I have ended up keeping, like they, they have obviously like nostalgic value to me. And yeah. It's like you're. I'm not gonna get it. Like a Tron. Good luck ever finding one of those, and there, it's gonna be so expensive. I can um, find you one. You're gonna be bleeding out your butt after. I can find you one. I got major connections. Any arcade machine you want, original, I can find it. Yeah, but how much is it gonna cost? I don't know. I can find <laughs> out. I I know the guy that can that probably has them and can find them. Tron, Star Wars, and Dragon's Lair, I feel like they're all going to be just insanely expensive. I mean, at least anywhere yeah. from five to, to 12 grand, depending on the condition per unit. So, I've actually seen a, tri- a, a Tron for sale lately. Like the original Tron? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it was local to me or not. Rampage World Tour was cool. Um, late to the party. What's up? What's up? What's up? What up? We got a, We got another three hours, so you ain't late to nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, I think like fifteen minutes, and I'm done. Skis. Is it? Is it time for your wine time and movie time? <laughs> no, I need to eat. I haven't like eaten at all today. Oh really? Oh shit. Yeah, I don't eat because it makes me tired. Hmm. So I eat at night time. I'll have like a little snack, you know, kind of like in the afternoon, and I I don't really. Oh okay. I can't even find my damn marketplace on this stupid thing. I was gonna see, cause I thought I saw one. Tron. Okay. Yeah. You got it. It's in Mineral Wells, about an hour from me. They want thirty nine hundred for it. Is it working? Is it beat oh, yeah. to shit? Uh-uh. Can you, sh- oh, wait. Pretty, can you pretty share pretty it on your screen? Can I? I don't know. Um, can you? Share it on my screen. How do you share it on this damn thing? Is there a way I can send Express it? time. Oh, yeah. I used, to do, I used to do screen. like mukbangs on like kind of mukbangs, but... I would have a uh, Travis on the show and then we would agree to like order from DoorDash from like the closest place that we would both agree on. I'm sure and I don't then... got into something nasty on here. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, can you still, can you see anything? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Do you see it? Uh, okay. Hold on. Stand by. Let me see. I'm going to copy this. Copy. Let me see. And I'm going to go to here and i'm gonna pull it right here i think this is yeah i think this is original shit come on come on come on uh paste <clears throat> reference there we go yeah we i got it now so you can see it yep original tron upright arcade by valley midway okay so see there's the sides there's the guts good god that's pretty that's actually not bad 3900 yeah. Yeah, that's original because that would, yeah. You can wow. Tell that. Yeah. Original. 
Yeah, I might need new black lights or something, but you know, I mean that's, that shit that you, thing shit. is in good condition. Thirty nine hundred is is no. not bad. I, do you think you could get it for thirty five though? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, because this this guy, I, I've never talked to this certain guy before, but I know who he is. He's He's a guy about an hour away from where I live, and he runs a retro arcade, and he he buys and sells his shit all the time. But yeah, that's a see, that's a Tron. So yeah, that's that's a good deal. <laughs> that's a good deal. Yeah. I mean, if you get so. that for thirty five hundred, that'd be a steal. Um, and it looks like it's it's pretty much all original, like from just from what I can see in mm -hmm. the pictures. Yeah, looks pretty clean. So see, you never know. You can, you can get something you want. Yeah. Just gotta do some research. Blah, research. Those things are so. like so. The only thing that sucks about the originals is they're so finicky. Like they will break. Go back to. They will. Yeah, I, that, go I got you back. You. I got you back. Yeah, but I can't see you though. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can. Get you back on here. Um, should be good now. There we are. Yeah. yeah so there's your Tron. You asked for. Da da. I found one just like that. <laughs> but still, I was close. Five. What? What did I say? Five grand to twelve grand, depending. But yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's a good deal though. That's a good price. <clears throat> but yeah, and. You know, what Star Wars is you're talking about? Are you talking about Star Wars, the arcade game? No. That one, the, the original, trilogy? No, the original Star Wars. But, I mean, like, that's 3900 bucks, like, cash money. I'm not, I'm not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I mean, it ain't, it ain't cheap. I'm not down with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, this shit can be pricey. Uh, Kappa Jones, who are you hosting? Oh, Twisted Chris um, from Twisted Gaming TV. There's a board called Jamaizer where you can play consoles on your arcade cabs. Oh, yeah, I've seen something like that for Dreamcast. Kind of cool. But Greg says, oh, it's an original. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a good price for it. Yeah. I will have to say though that the Tron that Arcade One Up did, that's probably the best cab they ever did. I mean, it just, you know, it it just when you looked at it, you know, it just the glowing and it's just yeah, it's an awesome. That was yeah, just, just never aesthetically, seen it in person. Just, just aesthetically, it's an awesome cab. Um, yeah. and you really didn't have to do anything to like I added um, uh. Who was it that makes it? Tulsa Arcades makes an S panel where mm -hmm. um, if you look like the other one that we were just looking at, it had like the MCP background on the top. And that's just a, it's like a still picture. But anyways, the arcade one up one didn't come with that spot to put that. And okay. Tulsa Arcades made like a little piece that you can stick in there that allows you to do that. And so I added that and that was it. Yeah. And then I ended up getting eventually like way, way later, um, I got a retro 530 marquee for it because he does the Bally Midway one. And, I mean, that just completely set it off. Like, that just was, like, the finishing touch to it. And That's it's awesome. Yeah, it's just a really pretty cab. Um, yeah. And it's, obviously, I love, like, Ron. I'm a huge fan of the old school Tron. Yeah. I used to play it in the arcade, so. We'll come up with 3900 and we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot of money for this shit, you know? Yeah. I know all the ones that I want are like of course the most expensive and harder ones to come by. Um yeah. but somebody had uh like discs of Tron is the other one. Mm. And there was an upright version and then there was an environmental version and I always talk about this, but a while back somebody found an environmental one like on the side of the street and it was like it was like perfect almost. And uh, and they just picked it up and and walked away with it. I mean that thing is like got to be 
fifteen thousand dollars probably something like that something insane people that own it didn't even know what this shit was worth they thought it was just you know nothing yeah or they were just like over it and they had money and didn't give you know yeah like, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna find this and know what it is so yeah that's true <laughs> um yeah. but yeah so we're we're rolling up to um the t- the what is it the top of the hour bottom of the hour bottom of the hour right top of the hour it is for me it's almost midnight here yeah and uh <laughs> this is a good stream we had it like, yeah fun it, i can talk for hours yeah we were uh we went in i think we started off in the beginning and said we're just gonna pretty much shoot the shit and talk about whatever yeah fun it's kind of to just do like that aimless type of show but chat um appreciate you guys listen uh so we got about you know seven minutes left if you guys have any questions for chris um or me uh, feel free to drop them in the chat um we'll answer questions and uh and chris you have uh anything you want to say upcoming for your channel or anything um chris has got a couple cool videos out he's got his uh ps3 kiosk video he's got his he picked up marvel versus capcom 2 on ps2 uh and really nice condition cool find and uh i can't remember i remember you talking about ebay and scrolling through there but did you get that off of ebay or did you get it off of um oh the marvel ebay yeah yeah ebay okay but you got like a you got like a good deal on it um for 220 i guess and they're expensive a favorite mukbang food (laughs) so wait hold on kappa jones says does chris have a running arcade (laughs) yeah yes what kind of arcade well he's he's got he's got a a ton of arcade games in his game room answer your question and Bono's says favorite mukbang food, Chris. Favorite. You got you got it, dude. Mukbang. Have you have you you've never done a mukbang, mukbang. have you? Mm-hmm. A gangbang or a mukbang? No, no mukbang. We we all know you've done a gangbang. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't even know what the hell a mukbang is. Yeah, it's like where you it's where you eat food, you know. Like those people that like eat food on li- on videos or live, and they're like. Oh, right. They get major views. Yeah, right. It does. Um, so, mm. so if you could eat a food on a live stream, what would it be? Oysters. So you can hear the Oysters. ASMR. Oh, man, that's slurpy. <laughs> yeah, that's so slurpy. Um. Oh, it should be funny. Maybe I should start a Twisted Food channel. Twisted Food TV and just start eating shit right in front of the camera. Or do, like, Twisted... Twisted, uh, twisted games and mukbang, twisted gaming mukbang, and then just yeah. you're like playing COD, but you're like sucking down oysters at the same time, you know? Oh my goodness, that would be hilarious! That would yeah. be some funny shit. Yeah. Wow. I need to do what chat. Do you think I should do a, a live stream, another live stream where I have a guest on and we do like a mukbang, um, while we're talking about random stuff and we're just eating yep i'll be on that show <laughs> that'd be funny i'm down but yeah let, let me know chat if you guys think so how many people are <laughs> i can't even see uh how many people are in the uh the chat how many people do we have left remaining it's so it's like late for everybody on the east coast i feel like i have my accent thing exit out of the damn the our live deal because i was going uh 12 watching right now okay um yeah yeah dude now i do have some videos coming of some graded games that i sent off to get graded so cool oh wait didn't you see Oh, you did like a thumbnail, didn't you? Yeah, and that's the video that was supposed to drop it uh, 
4 p.m. And I said, oh, shit. Uh-huh. And that's the one that got like 10 fucking views. I'm like, fuck this. And I just Dude. tore it down. Dude, let me, uh, yeah, we'll, t- we'll talk after this. But, um, yeah. Let's see. I miss I missed the whole thing. Uh, it's all good. Thanks for stopping by. Um, okay. So yeah, chat. Buckbang. Yes. No. We have we have nobody. We have to do this during the daytime. Uh, yeah. Um, I think they're all dead, tired now, and they're just listening to voices and nothing else. <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, chat. Uh, big time. Thanks for hanging out. I feel like we were talking about this before the show started, but there was just like crazy amount of streams uh, tonight, which I guess is kind of normal for a Friday. But um, I yeah. was like, man, there's a lot of streams going on right now. I could see in my little sidebar on the internet thing. But anyways, thank you guys. Uh, tons and Chris, thank you for coming on and being a guest for a three hour stream. And thank you. Oh, thank you. It's about time I get a three hour stream. I always got the hour and a half. And it's like, oh. come on, man. I want a three hour. <laughs> Next time we're going to have a five hour. <laughs> oh, man. You better suck down some energy drinks. <laughs> My heart will explode. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night, guys. Um, and until next time, I'll see you then. <laughs>